It's so stupid, it's positively brilliant. <laughs> it's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast, Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. Uh, we have two special guests in the building, host of the Get Your Popcorn Ready Podcast. Get your popcorn ready. Yes, sir. I'm going to say Matthew Hatchet first, just out of respect. As well you should, okay. young man. Okay, and then Terrell <laughs> Owens. <laughs> Ter- 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 Terrell, Terrell, Terrell Owens, Terrell Owens, Terrell, 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 for him to be the quarterback that he that he was, yeah, and so to to sit now where he sits in the seat of announcing games, you know, dissecting you know plays before they happen. Again, he doesn't have any pressure right. coming after him, you know, in a booth as he does on the football field. Right. So you don't have those innate abilities to escape. You know what I mean? Right. In a booth like you do on the field. Right. You get what I'm saying? So most quarterbacks, what you're saying, or a lot of quarterbacks know what's going to happen, but it's different when you got a guy 260 pounds running at you. And you have two seconds to do it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right, right, right. So he's not so elite maybe at calling the game. Like if you brought another quarterback who had played the position for just as long, he could probably predict those same plays. I think, well, well I don't know. Troy Aikman don't do that. No, 99% of the players. He's been concussed. I don't even know if he's there <laughs> no. still. Like, but, but, but he doesn't know where he is, Troy Aikman. But the thing Aikman. is, yeah, between, yeah. different between con- uh, Troy Aikman and, and Tony Romo. Yeah. Troy Aikman has won Super Bowls. Mm. Tony, right. Tony mm. hasn't really won anything. And that's that was a knock on him is that he couldn't win the big game. Or he right. Get the team pass, mm. Okay. Whatever. Can Playoff. we can we yeah. I have a I have a question because I have a theory. Let me clear this up. That's okay, not go. me hating on Tony. No, you're just like saying a facts. Right yeah, but it's not like a hater. Hater. Right. But people that I'm saying, but people are hearing it and they're like, oh, he's hating this, that, and the other. No, I'm not hating on it. I cried for the guy. Like, you know. In the locker room, like I said, when we're cry. in the locker room, you're a brotherhood. Yeah. And that's, I ride it, I, I die, you know, cry for my dude. You know right. what I mean? Because I thought the questions at that time was unfair. And yeah. if, to clear, so everybody, bring everybody up to speed is we got into the playoffs. He was dating Jessica Simpson at the time. Um, we had a week before playoffs start, and they went to like Cancun or Cabo or something, him and Jason Witten and everybody else. And then everybody's like, oh, well, he's not focused, blah, blah, blah. Hmm. You know, and then we came back and we lost the game. So we got in a, we got press press conference, you know, and they tried to blame it on that was his trip was the why we lost the game. What'd you do that, that week? Nothing, that has nothing to do with anything. Yeah. I, I, I had it. I think I had a high ankle sprain, so I was getting treatment. Man, around the you clock. always hurt. Yeah, bro. Okay. To be such yeah. a <laughs> physical <laughs> specimen, you <laughs> sure always that hurt. Hurts. That's kind of a point, T.O. You, you are hurt in the big <laughs> moments. Right, but, you, but to your uh, credit, you did oh, play. But I came, I came through in the big yeah. moments, too. You know, whereas you, you asked me about the McNabb situation, mm-hmm. you know, um, when I was in the hyperbaric chamber getting treatment around the clock, little did I know, he's out the night before the game getting boozed up, this and that and that. Then all mm. of a sudden we're in the game and then he gets hmm. sick. So you're, we, you're, end up you're, losing, we end up losing. You're saying the getting sick was from the booze? He was 24, hung over? 23, 24, uh, 21, we end up losing the, losing the Super Bowl. So the, the, but everybody was like, but I never, the thing is, I was so, I was so, I had two screws and a plate in my, in my ankle. So my focus was honestly, you weren't even supposed to play. Right. Yeah. So my focus was so yeah, was on unreal. getting ready and being prepared for the game. So I had no idea till a week later that he had thrown up in the huddle. Mm. Hank Fraley, who was our center at the time, and Freddie Mitchell, they're the ones I think kind of acknowledged or, you know, those were the first ones to mention that he had gotten sick in the huddle. I did an interview. I was in Miami, some reporter, what have you. And so he asked me about the incident. And I said, and my response was, I said, if anybody should have been out of shape, it should have been me because I hadn't played in like Mm. about a month and a half. Yeah. So I never said anything about him being sick in the huddle or him throwing up in the huddle. But with my response, it came out the next week. Oh, Terrell's criticizing Donovan. He said he threw up in the huddle. He was out of shape. Mm. I never said you it. You actually just said Donovan McNabb got drunk the night before the Super Bowl. I, this is not, I said, that's why. You said I boozed heard. up. Yeah, he was yeah. boozed up. But I said, I didn't know this is what Where I was heard. the soup? 
I don't know. I mean, all these years, bro, like I said, everybody has criticized me and said that I broke up the team. And he just recently come out and said, oh, I, I, saw prevented, I prevented them from getting, you know, to the Super Bowl or making a Super Bowl run that, that, that the following year when the year of the Super Bowl, two weeks prior to the Super Bowl, they were asking him, you know, about my availability, you know, for the Super Bowl. And he was basically saying that he didn't need me. They didn't need me. We got to the Super Bowl without T.O. because they played those two playoff games uh, mm-hmm. without me. So then, so why would you now come out and say, oh, I prevented you from getting mm. to the Super Bowl the, sec- the next year when you just said you didn't really need me? Mm. I brought a lot of swag, a lot of energy, a lot of professionalism, a lot of big plays to Philadelphia when I came over uh, from San Francisco. And I think that kind of energizing, that kind of sh- stuck with the team and that kind of Flow through the through, through the season. If they rolled, they rolled that energy that I brought. Question to the playoffs. If you know for for both of y'all because both of y'all play football. The night before a big game, shouldn't players protect each other from like going out and getting drunk or getting high think, or being you, with women? Right. Like, yeah. but you would think, especially the how he's regarded to be a pro, consummate pro professional. You know, he's a quarterback, captain of the team. You would think that he would be the guy to make sure that that. Those things, you yeah. Know, in in, in good in good yeah. locker rooms, usually they do right. Good locker room. All the veterans are making sure the younger guys are in by a certain time. Where, like I said, there's no reason to go out because we're here for one goal. Uh, when you have like a younger team or like younger leaders, then mm-hmm. they think that's what it's about. But most of the time, m- most good teams do have a good locker room. And they kind of you know kind of police themselves. What if it was nerves though? Like the night before a big game, do you got to go out and try to do something to take the edge off? You do. Uh-huh. You do the exact same thing. You should do the exact same thing you've been doing all year. Yeah. Especially yeah, if you're a veteran. Coaches, you know, they, but if you they, win, no one cares, sh- right? Like, you know, Michael Jordan's out gambling until like 4 a.m. in the morning. But, playing. Not, but he was a freak of nature. All, Jordan could do Michael that. Jordan and Donovan in the same. That's just <laughs> the same basket. I know. I know. Sense. What I'm saying is winning, I'm winning you cures all. Me, you can't. You can't. MJ, no, Kobe, you can't. You can't be in that conversation you neither. <laughs> you're, no. Wait, did you just put you in that conversation? That's what I'm saying. You're here. What's that? There's no. Not here. Bro, come on. Not here different because they're not here okay let's okay let's no, talk about i've been trying to tell him the same thing he's not on that level shows. mj and kobe well obviously kobe rest in peace but like yeah. mj and kobe they're doing different things because they transcended the sport right so i didn't transcend what i did as a receiver mm. a big receiver I'll, I'll give you i'll Consider give you that I, but you're still I, not I on their level this. i will say this about receivers i think that receivers are the most dynamic position say what possibly. you say keep come going, going. Keep that yeah, give, come on give it can it i build me. Yeah, can I butter it, up? Yeah, give can it I butter me. up first? <laughs> no, no, don't butter, butter up. up. No, you're gonna no, need his butter. Here. So <laughs> I think it's I think it's the most dynamic, uh, probably the most dynamic athletes in sports. Mm-hmm. I also think it's the least effective position in helping your team win. I would never pay a wide receiver. I think a word ever. you said is useless. Okay. I think and it's the most okay. useless, useless position in terms of helping your team win. Yeah, I, I get what you're Why saying. You yeah. say, okay, so receiver? I just don't know an elite receiver that's won a Super Bowl in the last decade. Both of them okay. are receivers. But it ha- it has, I know. Yeah. Okay, so I was number, a hold, energy's hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me get him. Let me get him, T. Let me get him, T. Who's there? Come first on the So I would say that I'm an elite receiver. You are no doubt an elite receiver. So if Donovan wasn't getting 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 get sick in the Super Bowl, we would have won. If he wasn't drunk, hung, hang it, hung over. So, <laughs> so to your point, to discount your point that you didn't see, you've never seen an elite receiver win a Super Bowl. No, no, in the last decade. The last I, I decade. Don't know okay, 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 cool. Mm-hmm. Okay, I, okay go. the last well, one I can remember is Marvin Harrison. And do you guys remember the? He's not. He wasn't. Uh, that's not. If he's not elite, then, that's, that's not the top ten my ever to play. Were better than his. And again, so nice then you're it. making my point. I see what he, I see what you're saying. Let, let me let me finish too. the point though. The point is because the game is not in your control. Right. Okay. So you upon. guys can be as great as you want to exactly. be. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Okay. We but you you catch other. the ball eight times a game. That's an amazing, that's an amazing game. game. Right. Only eight possessions right. you affect the game. Right. You're not really blocking. You are blocking on every single play. So don't say that I ever mean, again. But go ahead. Like, eh. You know what I mean? <laughs> like no, those, not, not, not blocking true. a linebacker at two fifty. You're blocking a cornerback at five Sometimes we are, but go ahead. Okay. So you're not truly affecting the outcome of the game as much as other position play. For example, offensive defensive line like those. 
those are the only people I would pay. Mm-hmm. Offensive, defensive line, mm-hmm. quarterback, maybe. Mm-hmm. I don't even think you got to be that so good. So who are you gonna pay then? Offensive, defensive line. You pay the a hey, defensive mm-hmm. line. I'm all for okay. them. They're okay. underpaid. I mean, they're I mean, defensive line. Under, they're grossly underpaid, and it's their fault. But you they, guys are exciting. You guys sell the tickets, and the people who sell the tickets get money. Don't get me wrong. The I one-handed catches, OBJ. It, I don't know if OBJ is ever gonna win a, a Super Bowl. Matthew, Probably go, not. Go. Okay, so go, what, yeah. what you're saying is right. There's 11 players on the field, right? Yeah. You take those two or three receivers, top three receivers. Yeah. If you take them out and just put in regular dudes, yeah. what do you do when it's third and seven? What do you do when it's third and 11? What do you do in the last two minutes of a game? Because if mm. those receivers are not getting open... Third and tight end. No, so you, don't, you don't have one. Right? Don't have, because he's not as good as a receiver. Let's just say he's blocking. And you that's who scores touchdowns in the Super Bowl. No, that's not... That's you not never hold mentioned on. tight end. Tight ends block every position. Okay, so tight ends affect the game. Hold on, hold on. Exactly. So they're an offensive lineman and a receiver. So how is the tight end going to be factoring into this equation which he's trying to explain to you. But no, let's just say He's not in this equation, right? He's blocking because you have to be blocked up. We need max protection because our quarterback's getting beat up, let's say, right? Okay. So you only have three receivers. We can go four receivers, right? Okay. Yeah, if yeah. those guys aren't catching the ball, how are you advancing the ball down the field? I throw a screen. That doesn't work. Come on now. That, <laughs> come on. That's you can only... It. You can, I'm not going to do anything. You, but you can't. You can only... You got two. I do. I mean, do yeah. this podcast. Okay. My with, receivers are with, useless, bro. It's just with, a useless with, position. That's not, with, not, not, not in that moment that, that uh, Hatchet just explained. Yeah. In that match, he just explained they are okay, the most important person. Okay, that one moment. No, it's not one. How many third downs in the game? There's 15 to 20 third downs in the game, right? You're going to have two two-minute situations in every game. So you're talking about out of all of those plays, you take out the receivers, you cannot advance the ball, and how many times have no, you no, seen... No, you can have receivers. They just don't have to be that good. They but could they be a guy who's a bouncer or one oak. But what if they don't catch it? Because you wow. want to know what guys who are average that wow. play receiver, they don't catch the ball, number one. Why can't they catch the ball? We're talking because about NFL receivers. Because, hold on, wait, 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 no, no, can you catch the ball. Let me see that. Let me see that ball Tom Brady, no, let's talk about Tom Brady. Get that ball. No, 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 no. Let's talk about Tom Brady. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is easy to catch. 100%. He just dropped it. You threw it on my elbow. Now you're throwing like Donovan McNabb, bro. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> so you're, you're saying you, the you average saying? guys don't you see that? You caught with your chest. That, 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 that was horrible. Not with the chest. Catch with your hands. Only whores catch with their chest. But to your point, you see why? You see? You see why? You, do you see why the New England Patriots? You see that? You see that? Do you see why the New England Patriots suffered? Just for the, the, the how many the, rings they suffer no, 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 with, dude. We're talking. To stay on the course. Look at the, their stay wide receivers. Right now. Wes Welker no, no, is five no, two. No, no, stay on course. He, he should be working player. in a keeper we're health house. That's not a, that's so not a true point, statement. That's you, a dude. Why that's, did this, why did the Patriots suffer this year? Because they didn't have a receiver or a tight end to get open. That was his frustration. Now you know. To it, your point, you make a good point. I'm just telling now, you. Now that one year when the when the the Patriots had the, arguably had the greatest wide receiver they broke in every history, what did they end up doing at the end of the season? They lost the Super Bowl. They lost in the Super Bowl because when these elite wide receivers don't help you win, they do help you win when they use in the right way. Name one. Help them. Why wouldn't they? Why didn't they win the Super Bowl? So you think it's Randy Moss' fault? No, no, no. I'm not saying it's Randy Moss' fault. Okay. I'm not saying that. But to his point, you need you're going to need some dynamic dynamic receivers. And so, no. To his point, it was a very not smart conversation you're having because if you take linemen out. It's the same thing. If you take receivers out, it's the same thing. If you take the quarter, it's all the same. Listen, you need eleven listen. people. Football 100%. is the best, right? Team there sport are, you'll it's ever an fight. Amazing you need team sport. everybody. It's an amazing sport because ninety nine percent of people who watch it have no fucking clue what's going on. They're still entertained by it. Right. I but, am ignorant to what happens. I can't describe what a nickel defense. I can't do all this kind of stuff. I, I don't know. So understand you shouldn't what's be having out. the conversation. All, all I can I'm all I can go off is data. He thinks he name can cover both of y'all right name now. Oh, I can. Oh, I can definitely. I can lock both down. Shows that he can do heart surgery. And then he played one on one with Jay Williams. He challenged Jay Williams. <laughs> oh, Jay yeah. Williams spotted that's, him six that's, points. That's buckets, though. That's he buckets. Can, so you can, can, can you hoop? Can, can, can you hoop? Of course I can hoop. But you hoop now? It was a seven point I game. Let, oh, no, you don't want smoke. I don't want to I want the receiver. Because I want to see you try to cover T.O. That's my word. I'm the best athlete in this room. No, you're not. You're the second best athlete in this room. I can't say who's better. I just know that. Thank you for acknowledging me, man. If you got analytics, then you would know. Okay, <laughs> smart guy. If you got Listen, I don't know his analytics. You don't you need don't, to know my analytics. I'm a dude. Okay, you're a dude. There we go. What's <laughs> it? <laughs> I know. When we say, I know when we, we got to say that. So when we say, say dude in, when we say dude in sports, that means he's a, an elite, guy. elite guy. That's but, what okay. we mean by oh, dude. Oh, that that being said, I can dude. definitely. There are elite receivers and there are game changers. There yeah. are playmakers. What yeah. are you? 
I'm one of, I'm one of those two that I mentioned. I'm a playmaker and I'm a game. I'm saying, changer. what do you think is higher? Because me, elite is higher. Well, again, I think an elite receiver is a elite. game changer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Gotcha, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha, but yeah, do yeah. you think that you could catch a pass if I was defending you now? Man, that's not even a don't Absolute, even, don't dude, even, what? Why are you even answering the question? Exactly. I'm not. What? Don't what are you I'm not answering. answering. <laughs> that's no, no, not even a question. Have you ever seen pros versus Joes? First of all, of course. Just like when that when we play, I beat everyone. First of all, this is this is equivalent. This, uh, this is, I've never, I've I'm said, undefeated. I don't, I, I I'm undefeated against pros. This is equivalent when we played when I was with the Niners and Bro. we played the New York Giants. I won't even touch. And they had Jason, Jason Seahorn. Seahorn. I'm not about to let a white boy check me. Hey, he just called hey. you. This I, is I a, love when he turns the uh, race back. This is a white man. I, I'm just, Jason Seahorn's a white boy. You got a white, white man, man right here. Okay? You, you kind of look like. Look at this. You look like Seahorn. Actually, here's the thing. Not all of us look alike. Now look. Oh, let me tell you something too. Andrew Schultz is also a comedian. Yeah. Okay. I, okay. Hey, the, with the right first now, conversation, right now, 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 now nothing's funny. Know. Now I would never know. I would never know. Here's, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I would never know. I never know. So look, at the line, here's the thing. I won't even check you at the line. You, what, what is that? That's, that's, that's not even a, a word. What's that? It's not even a check. At, what's I'm, that I mean? play football in the streets, bro. I didn't do this bougie thing that's that you guys did. That's the problem. That's the professional shit y'all do here. I'm out here in the hood playing football. We say check at the line. That's where I stayed. I won't even do the thing where I push hands. you back and you hands, fall. Though. You know what I mean? <laughs> Look at the size of these motherfuckers. These no, it's a position. You know what they said? This it's, is interception. That's what that is right there. What does that That's mean, Matthew, when you still get his hands? I, the way he would, because okay. to us, he's saying press, and if and if a DB comes up and presses like this, it's a wrap. Yeah, yeah, Like, yeah, you yeah. better get down here and have maybe have one out like this, extend your elbow. But there, there, he's he's old. He's There's, 59. And That's hilarious. hilarious. You know what? I There's will, no way, bro. What? Like this. Look, look. Like this. Oh I give you one little... Uh, one inch punch, that, Bruce Lee style. That's, that's one little horrible. one inch punch, and that's you're gonna horrible. go like this. You go, oh, oh do god! It right now, and you're gonna do butt good. hook, no, this is butt good. hook. How, much, how many <laughs> yards is this? <laughs> 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 Let's do it right now. This is about what? Let's do it right now. Quick going. This is going to hall. Hold on, hold on, let's go. Let's go, 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 go. But listen, here's it. Do you want me to press you at the line or no? That's on you. What you want? But here's the thing. Make it light on yourself. Yeah, yeah. Light on myself yeah, is honestly light, light, light on myself is I just shadow you because you can't beat me with speed. So there's there's no I, way. I, that's, I, I, got, like that. I have new you sneak. Are, I got new are, balance. What you, you think, Matthew? I got new you balance, bro. It's got balance in the world. We should do it right now. Like, quick, real quick, is just a little throw. First just a little throw. Let's do first it. First of all, he's already beat. He's saying that I don't have speed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I wasn't known for speed anyway. I know that. That's why I said it. Analytics guy, Google me and see if I've ever been caught from behind. I, I, listen, that's your I, personal I, life, bro. What, I don't want to get into that. I, what's that? I, I, what's that? You know what? What's that? What? I, I, what? What, what, what language is that? Hey, he just called you the Michael Sam of wide receivers. You didn't even catch him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, he Michael Sam G. Oh, Michael that, Sam. I like man, this guy. <laughs> Where's Michael Sam? He's not in the XFL. Oh man. No. You know what? I, you know what I wanted to ask you? Uh, we didn't get a chance to talk uh, during the interview. Yep. How did you feel about Andy Reid winning the Super Bowl? I was honestly I was happy for him, and for me, like I said, playing in Philly, and obviously the way that things went down, you know, me not being able to, con you know, continue on, I got suspended the sec my my second year, and then just the way our first year went, like I like that's what they brought me to Philadelphia to do to help get them beyond the four NFC championships that they had been to mm -hmm. prior, and as I mentioned to you earlier, earlier some of the guys they can attest to, Brian Westbrook has said it. Um, Brian Dawkins, those guys know I brought an energy over there. I brought swag over there, and that and that that took them through the playoffs. When I had gotten hurt, you know, being um, dragged down for the for the horse collar, and I was injured, that energy that that I brought throughout the course of the season that propelled throughout the throughout the playoffs. Mm -hmm. So for me, like I felt like I let the city down, you know, because that's what I wanted. You know, what I mean, I wanted to get get to the Super Bowl. We played. In the Super Bowl, I played with two screws and, and a plate in my ankle. I thought they said you had a broke leg, which you didn't. I did. I had a broke a, a broken ankle. ankle. Wow. I, no, I had two screws and, and, a, and a plate in my ankle. I and had one a in severely, your head. A severely sprained ankle, <laughs> and my fibula was broken. And so that the only thing that bothered me was the break. So when I went out pregame or what have you, um, they tried to tape my ankle up. That was the worst thing to do because it, it hurt really bad. So I went back inside, um, talked to Rick Burkert, who's he's still with Andy. Won a Super Bowl. He's a head trainer for the for the Chiefs as well, and so I went in and I told him. I said, "Dude, I said my I said up by my knee. I said it's the break. I said it's it's hurting really mm -hmm. bad. So what he did was he basically just took some tape because when you walk and you distribute <clears throat> your your weight distribution, your bones naturally spread, and so that's what was 
bothering me. So they basically just put some tape around it that kind of eliminated it, uh, eliminated some of the, uh, the, the the pain. And so I, I was I was good to go. And so, again, I tried to do everything within my power. I knew that I wasn't 100 percent, but I gave it all that I had, knowing that prior to getting to Philly, when I got to Philly, how the fans embraced me, going to Lehigh University, having 10,000 plus people that I practice every day. That's what really made me want to really play in that Super Bowl. Even though, like I said, I even had to sign a waiver just to play in the Super Bowl. Hmm. So the team, What did the waiver say? Um, so they wouldn't be liable because the, yeah. the, doc, the doctor that, per, that, that performed my surgery, he didn't medically clear me. Wow. So I couldn't just be on the football field. Otherwise, somebody was going to be liable. So I had to sign that waiver in order to play in the Super Bowl. Why was it that important to you, though? Because you had a future after that game. So why was that so important? If you realize, that was the only Super Bowl I ever played in. Yeah. You know, so again, you know, everybody, if you're the, unlike the Patriots, you're not going to get to the Super Bowl very, very often. Man, and so for me, that. I just felt like within my power, um, everything that I had done throughout the course of my career, like I'm a man, I'm a, I'm a God fearing man. I was raised in the church. Um, my grandmother always told me, just put faith in him and you can do anything that, you know, you put your mind to. And that was pretty much the premise of why I wanted to get back on the field. It wasn't trying to outshine or anybody. I knew that if God gave me the ability uh, and, and the, the trainers put everything that they did behind me to get on that football field and I could play, then that's what I was going to do. Matthew, let me ask you, because I, I want an objective opinion on this. Mm -hmm. Does that help or hurt a team? Right. T.O. hasn't played in a while. Mm -hmm. Comes back. He's not 100 percent. Mm -hmm. They might have established a different type of chemistry. Yep, yep. Does that help or hurt? Uh, at that time, it helps because that's your superstar. Mm -hmm. Like, and when Kevin Durant came back, right for that game, that energy that's in the building, that's in the city, it definitely helps. It helps yeah. every player, especially the role players, because again, don't forget they won two playoff games. So the role players, like I've done my portion, I raised my level up, but I might not be able to do it this third game. Whew, I'm glad I got my big brother back. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it definitely helps in all those scenarios. And I would have thought that's what that was the approach that Donovan would have taken with me being out, you know, those two playoff games. You know, he's been politically correct all his life. You know what I mean? But when it came to me for some odd reason. Maybe he don't like, like you, dog. Yeah, like I said, that's what I took from it. Is that <laughs> what, what is it against me? What is it about me that you dislike? What do you think it was? If I don't know. And if you're going to get mad at anybody, why not get, at, get mad at the media for asking you that question? But you've been politically correct. Every other answer, why not be politically correct when it came to me about, you know, whether I was going to play or not? He could have found a number of ways to answer about me not, you know, being, you know, not being available to play in the Super Bowl. Why do you think he started taking shots at you, shots at you now? That was I, like last but, month. In the last year, a couple of weeks I, ago. I, I, mm. I, honestly, I, I don't know. Mm. And so for me, like I said, I, th I thought it was dead. I thought it was it was done. I had, I've had i seen him a few times after that. We played in Larry Fitzgerald's softball <coughs> uh, game on the team, whatever. I thought everything was cool. But at the end of the day, like I said, you know, um, when you're trying to stay relevant for whatever reason, um, and as I mentioned to you earlier, I've never been in the off the field, uh, had any off the field problems, any issues. For somebody, to, for him, the league, the team, guys have put him in such high regard. Who's had the most off, off the field issues? How many DUIs have he had? Mm. How many, how many, how many uh, meat sexual salt me situations? Me me too. Too. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. He called I've me dudes? Yeah, he's on that list, bro. So again, really, I always like I said, bro. <laughs> bro. Yeah, like I said, I appreciate the question about accountability, mm -hmm. bro. I've always been accountable for what I've done, and even when people have accused me of things that I haven't done, mm. like I said, I'm always going to defend my character. And uh, reputation, the reputation is what people think of you. And like for me, and my character, I'm proud of who I am. I'm proud of who my grandmother raised. And so, after all of that, if I'm such the bad person that the media has portrayed me to be all the years, you would think that it would translate a transfer to post football. So you and Donovan never had a meal together? Y'all never bro, had any type of relationship? After he cursed me out in the huddle, bro, <clears throat> I, I canceled all of that. Really? It would be Wait, like, what, said, you don't know, we, 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 we teammates or whatever, <laughs> yes. and I'm in the huddle, and I don't throw you, I'm, you're me. I'm, I'm, I'm Donovan. You come to me, I'm like... <laughs> T, I was open on this play. We don't I don't want on, no fucking suit. We don't, we, <laughs> right. So I'm gonna give you this scenario. So we don't work on this play. We I think it was the, the the Browns or the Giants. I can't remember who it was, but we ran this particular play. I'm number one in the progression. The play worked to a T in practice. We didn't even have to tell that sometimes they'll scheme and tell the defense what to do, but we didn't even have to do that just because the play was so potent. Did it in practice number of times, did it in the game, it worked to a T. Everybody knew the play was coming up. I ran the route. Ran to the sideline, the defender bit, 
I'm up the sideline. I'm wide open. He doesn't even throw the ball. Mm. So I before I even before I even just judge anything, I come back to the huddle because I, I didn't see what was going on. So I'm thinking, okay, maybe he got flushed out the pocket or whatever the case may be. Um, I just went, I said, dude, I was wide open because when I came out of my route. What was your tone when no, you no, said no, no, that? Yeah. I don't think you said no, dude, no, no, I was no, wide no, no, open. No, 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 yeah, that's yeah, the yeah, question. Yeah, yeah. No, first, exactly. And I, I'm glad you asked that. My yeah. tone wasn't demonstrative. Nothing. It's, it was no different than any other time. I was like, dude, I said, I was wide open. It was just me talking to him. No profanity, no, no nothing. No, dude, he looked at me and told me, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> After that, bro. So I, I could have, I chose. Then I could have addressed it in the huddle. Yeah. But if we were during the game. I said, "No, nah, I'm gonna chill out." <laughs> we came out on that series. I even asked my position coach. I'm like, "Yo, I'm like, what happened on that?" My coach looked at me with kind of like just bewildered. He's like, "I don't know." I said, "Was he flushed out of pocket?" And he's like, "Nothing." So I, after the game, I went to my locker. We in the locker room. Um, I waited, like I said, at this time, like I said, I know that the perception. So I know people think, oh, he's going to, you know, he's destroying the locker room. It's always something. So I waited till the locker room cleared out. It was a couple of people in the, in, in the, in the area while we were getting dressed. And before he le left out of the area, I just addressed him. And I said, look, I said, dude, at the end of the day, I said, I'm a man, you a man. I said, I didn't come at you sideways or what have you. All I said was I was open. I said, don't ever dress me like that again. And so from that point on, did like, he say something back to you right that. there? Though you huh? believe that? Uh, uh, did, how, did he respond? To you? Like when you said that, did he no, respond? I, I can't back? remember what his response was, but he looked at me, addressed <laughs> it, or whatever. But at that point, my, I was like, bro, I, I just couldn't because, take the disrespect. Because, uh, because me, if you look at it from a quarterback position, right, when that happened, if he would have addressed it, he should have been like, well, look, something happened on that play, which he was frustrated, and he took out his frustration on you during the moment. Right, but, and I that, already, but that, you would have took that as an apology, but you're saying that never happened. That never happened. Okay. But, and the thing well, is, I is. already asked the coaches what had happened. They mm -hmm. had a bird's eye view. Yeah. I mean, so something could have happened, though. Right, something could have happened. Exactly. They're, but they're watching again. I know my, my coach is not going to lie to me. I asked him, I said, well, what happened on the route? He's like, I don't know. I I said, was he first flushed out of the pocket? And anything? No, there was no reason for him not to throw the ball. And I was number one in the progression. Maybe so you weren't just, open. That, that's what I'm trying. I'm trying because again, not talking the, the, to you. The, Maybe <laughs> first of all, because I'm nah, saying nah, from, I'm the court, I'm from the quarterback <laughs> position, you think you were locked up? Like I would first lock your ass no, up on that guy, same play, probably. You thought uh, you were security. open. Security. You thought. <laughs> security. You thought. Can we get you the heckler? And then I come. You sound ridiculous, dude. I also want to say too. I'm just saying. I'm right there. Because draped. When we talk about Donovan McNabb, we said to me too. I don't. I want to be clear about that. It was sexual, sexually harassing a colleague. He sent a colleague. A lewd text message. Uh, so I don't want people to think that he was okay. Because okay, okay. there's yeah. levels different, to it, right? right. Yeah, that's why yeah, I said yeah, yeah, put yeah, hands on sexual, yeah, 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 yeah. Some, yeah. some yeah. sexual misconduct. Yeah, not saying that's wrong, but I mean, you know, mm -hmm. right. there's so levels. You guys have sent lewd text messages before. You know, I'm sure. why, why? Why is that a bad? Oh, in the in the workplace, it's yeah, bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Right in the workplace, and okay. he's married. Oh, I didn't know that. Huh? Huh? I never thought teach. You can't, huh? you can't do it. They're gonna. You can't do that. What you mean? You can't. But he said he didn't know. I know, but you yeah, can't. Yeah, throws he under the bus. He under the bus. That ain't under the bus. He just under the bus. Under there. Make sure he's under there. That is his wife. How is that under the bus, nigga? That's just the real. He is. I'm just saying he's married. But you can't say that though. Come on. Why can't I say he's somebody else say that, man? We're guys. At the end of the day, that's bro code, right? It's bro code. He broke bro code too. Cussing me out. He broke code. No, bro code is you gotta, you know curse somebody no, out I, it is what it is on the football Sometimes, field shut the, the fuck up is kind field. of appropriate yeah. I'm sure you no, told somebody no. shut the fuck up I am no, no no I would what? never no, no I, was, really? I was a great team no, I've never done that bro I've never, that's the thing your perception is again yeah. because of media portrayal you would think that I would say something like that I would that. But definitely bro, I, think you would say something right, like but that but I I've never but, but you okay, know but no 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 be real okay but no alright let's take a break from Schultz and T.O. arguing um, to talk about Squarespace. Turn your dream into a reality with Squarespace, okay? Squarespace makes it easier than ever to launch your passion project. Whether you're looking to start a new business, showcase your work, publish content, sell products, and more, Squarespace is the tool for you. With beautiful templates created by world-class designers and the ability to customize just about anything with a few clicks, you can easily make a beautiful website yourself. Squarespace's powerful e-commerce functionality lets you sell anything online, and analytics helps you grow your site in real time. 
time. Everything is optimized for mobile right out of the box, and there's nothing to patch or upgrade ever. Buying domains is simple, and you'll get the help you need with Squarespace's 24-7 award-winning customer support. Squarespace empowers millions of people, from designers to lawyers, artists to gamers, even restaurants and gyms, to turn great ideas into something real. Head to squarespace.com slash idiot for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, use the offer code idiot to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash idiot, offer code idiot. Uh, church announcements. Yo, new tour dates added. New tour dates added. TheAndrewSchultz.com. Get them everywhere. Uh, or get all the tickets right there before they're gone. Uh, Pittsburgh, we'll see you this weekend. Um, then next weekend after that, we're in Miami. And then the weekend after that, we're in Portland. I believe it's Portland. Uh, new dates added. Atlantic City, Reading, PA, Tucson, Arizona, a bunch more, all at theandrewschultz.com. There's less than 100 tickets left to the fourth uh, show, the special taping. So make sure if you're in LA, if you're coming to the special tapings, you go get those right now, theandrewschultz.com. Um, now, let's pay some bills. Let me tell you something. Stop looking like a sucker with your baggy, ill-fitting, button-down shirt. Okay, you have a shirt, you purchase it, it's meant to be tucked in, you wear it untucked, and that's why it looks like trash. Do you want a shirt that's going to fit you well when it's untucked because that's exactly how it's made to be worn? Of course you do, all right? You just go to untuck it. Simple as that. Untuckit.com. Use the code IDIOTS, you get 20% off your first order. Amazing shirts that actually fit the way you wear a shirt. You're wearing that button down. You do not need to tuck it into your pants because that's not how we wear shirts. We're not going to a business meeting. We're not in the office. We're out here keeping it casual, okay? Maybe we had a lot of chicken wings and nachos over the weekend. We don't want to tuck it in. We don't want that little uh, muffin top. So we wear it untucked. Go to untuckit.com slash, uh, actually, no, untuckit.com. Use the promo code IDIOTS. You get 20% off your first order. Simple as that. You go, you do it, you look good, you let us know how it is. Now let's get back to the show. Be you the saying throw me the effing ball would Whoa. be the same thing as him saying shut the How are they going to throw you the ball if I'm but here? But I never told I'm him just, that. No, no, I'm no, saying I get that. But just being real, like you, yeah, perception-wise, yeah, you would think that, but you know me, and you've been around me, mm -hmm. and I'm not going to say anything mm -hmm. like that. That's yeah. the thing. You seem like you got a different level of discipline, though. I mean, I can tell just by the way you work out. That's just how, bro, I've never been given anything. Yeah. Like, Growing up in Alexander City, Alabama, and seeing guys that were better than I was, um, not playing, sitting on the bench, that's football, basketball, not, you know, I was running track just to get myself better, knowing that I didn't have any speed. I wasn't running any uh, sprint. I wouldn't run no hunters. I wouldn't run any 200s. That wasn't me. What was your 40 time? Coming Slow. out of college, coming out of college, I ran a four six three. <laughs> oh, you get locked up, right? But four, I, but, six, right? Bro. But I, but I, exactly. No, no, no. Wait, 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 yeah, I got a guy, man. A guy? A guy. <laughs> I, tell you I got a right. guy. Right. I got it. When you right. see this, this is raw again. <laughs> but no, tell me, how many track people do you... How many five, track seven people do you know size 14 a You cannot be a 4'3". That's I'm what I'm a saying. Dude, There's bro. a lot of people. The game is it's predicated different on with me. Speed, but you can it's have speed, look, look but what can you do? Look at how I like those feet are, dog. Look at how I like those feet are, dog. I hear you. So that ain't light. That was heavy. That was heavy. The whole building's shaking. when That's right. The building gonna shake. The building gonna shake, T.O. What was your 40 time? Man. I was a four three coming out. That's yeah, right. I, was, I, I, that's I would four think three. Be but there's there's Most track. Are, yeah, right. he but got faster as he as and he there's game I'm, speed. And my, yeah, and I wasn't track speed. But, just so you can don't throw that no, in there. No, no, I'm not saying after that you're I say fast. that you can't say after there's track speed because it sounds like you were saying. No, no, I didn't. Okay, have, no, it had nothing sure. to do with you. No, you listen. I'm making sure there was a number of guys that was faster than me coming out coming out high school college. Most of them. Most of them. Yeah, most of them. But as I said, guys like us were fast. It's different for him. And he got fast. Oh, and when I how you got horse collared if you didn't get caught from behind? And when I got when that's I caught old, the ball, that's a good how you got horse collared you know. if you didn't get caught from behind? It, it was an angle. It's a game called angles. It's, it's, an it's angle. a game of angles. I don't know what angles I know, are. You know, I just go straight no, and I'm not I lock people angels, down. <laughs> which lock you're, not you're gonna be called for the angels when I'm playing defense. Anyway, that's what happens. There's game speed and then there's track speed. If that's the case, there'd be a lot of track guys that are going out for football. You know what I mean? But like I said, there's 
the, the game encompasses more than just speed. There's a lot of skill set that you have to have in order to play the game. Like Especially this. receiver. Like a check. He wouldn't even get That's really, horrible. He like can't even get in the XFL right now. He can't like, even get in high school. Even, he can't play high school right. ball right now. I can't play high school ball because that's illegal. You can't even you, joke I got, your I got, way I got, into a team. I got it. That's illegal for me to play in high school. He's a comedian. He I'm a comedian. But when we get team. on the field, when we're on the gridiron. You're iron, still funny. Do you know yeah, what I mean? I'm yeah. gonna be funny, but honestly, funny the looking. joke's on you, bro. No, no, the, the joke's joking. on you. T. Does he remind you of Skip Bayless? Does this guy? No, I'm not even gonna give him that much credibility. <laughs> that hurt, Skip. <laughs> Skip. That hurt. That one hurt. Skip. That was deep, bro. You went, too, you went too deep on that one, bro. You treat me like Donovan. Skip, pay less. That's what you be. Skip, pay less. <laughs> what do y'all do? Like, I guess, uh, like when you miss the game. Like, what do y'all do to fill that void? I never right? was a. I, I, I'm a basketball fan. Like he's he he know like we no we joking around but he know I very seldom watch football. He don't even watch ball. I'll watch it sometimes like it. just to yeah. just to talk about it in certain bro. <clears throat> I never thought I was gonna play, bro. I I became very competitive and I was a late bloomer. So and then I started to realize my skill set. And like I said, going to the Niners, I saw what the best receiver was, the greatest receiver was at that time. And so again. When I say I'm grateful and thankful for the coaches that helped me and saw my potential, mm. then I'm I, I I truly mean that because they saw what I was capable of and I believed them. When I didn't sometimes probably didn't even believe in myself when I got drafted. Mm-hmm. I didn't think that I was gonna end up two, three, whatever behind Jerry Rice or be in conversation. So Jerry's with, number one? With yeah, number one. And you Who's think the about, greatest receiver of all time? No. Jerry. Mm. Jerry. No. Yeah. And about Chris no. Hogan. When you think and then No. No. And then you think about <laughs> uh, Randy Moss. Son, when you, when what you about Chris? Like, to, be in, though, to be in the conversation with those Edelman? guys, bro. Trust me, Edelman. I, I, it, 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 it is mind boggling mm-hmm. because I never thought it. Do you but think I you're said, better than Edelman? So oh, wait a I, minute, who's number one then, Matt? If it's not Jerry Rice, I play with both of them. Randy's number one. Randy's uh, number one, dude. and and and, I'll, and the reason is because so rings don't matter in football then. Rings don't matter, no, because bro, of this, gets it, dog. because of the Hatchet number of people. It. Right, the number of people that are involved. Right, mm-hmm. if you take the if you take two players, you have to put two players correct. on so one. Which that's what okay. again, that's why yeah. But I play with Jerry too. Jerry couldn't do the things Randy could do. Mm-hmm. Period. He cannot run like Randy. No, he no, cannot. I couldn't uh, either. Oh, and he couldn't do anything else that Randy could do. Now, but there's, when you but now when you talk when you about have, a complete receiver, what what I'm could a Randy receiver. do? I'm a he barely went over the middle. That's okay. Barely, okay, stop. Okay, when you talk, me, you get that was when one. You, talk you about got complete, one. We, you got one. Now, I if I oh, have I film and I show him running slants and taking it for sixty, but to the, consistently, that he, but nobody he's did it consistently. For, he's no. Yeah, I did. He's no, known you did. for catching going a deep ball. The top. That's people. not a true. That's, that's not a true statement. That's Randy. That's, that's what that's, people. That's what they just know because they know him. That's not what. That's not all he's doing. Right. When you think of Randy Moss, what do you think of? I mean, those are the highlight reels. Those are highlight reels. Thank you. Snatching it out the right. air. Thank you. Oh, but but that's always highlights. Yeah. I over the middle is never a highlight. That's unless you take it 60, right? So he was the, over the middle. The best, 60, the best run after catch guy in the last 30 years <laughs> is, right? <laughs> the, Honestly, he was. The best run after and he catch. He didn't run no 4 right? 6. That's T. Okay, that's the best run after catch. Okay. All the other skills, nobody had a better skill than Randy. Catching, running, no, mm. nobody had a better skill than Randy. Now, if you take You're trying to say that Jerry, that's disrespectful. It's what, just the what facts, could Jerry bro. physically do better than Randy? You can't name one. What do you physically? Mean? Physically, he was, dog. He was physically. he was the only guy that I ever seen catch up to a ball. Right, you've never seen me. I've, I've caught seen, up to some balls. I seen you. Wow. Right? Hey, de- yo. uh, pause, <laughs> pause, pause the balls. Oh, that sounds like a little text message. Going for it. Said, you want to catch up? You want to catch up on some I'm balls tonight? I'm about to man? catch your balls. <laughs> he said, "Catch up to a ball." I know it sound the same. It didn't sound the same. It's plural, dog. You have to make it plural. But no, because the thing about the thing about here, if you, I can take fifty of your touchdowns, right? If you here, here's one. Here's one thing. You take 50 of T's touchdowns. I can show you 50 of his, and there'll be nobody in the screen, mm. right? Because he outran them, let's say, right? That's a mm-hmm. compliment to T. Yeah, I appreciate it. I can take 50 of Randy's t- touchdowns, and there's three to four people in the scene, which means Randy went up and caught the ball over three or four people, mm. or he out them for that ball. That was a skill that Randy had that nobody else but could that do. Seems because subjective, of the six, though. Well, because... 
That's what I'm I mean, saying. saying to us as your, a receiver, yeah, right, exactly. That means making a play is he, going up and jumping him, over. Go going, get the ball, dude. Going to Megatron get the ball. style. Go get it. You see what I'm saying? Yes, 100%. I but agree yeah, with you on run everything. Run after catch. Now, he would have eight people he would run through and stiff arm and go score. So he had that skill. He was the number one in the last 30 years to do that, hands down. Who? T. T. Oh, what, what, what run he after catch. What does he rank to you, then? T? Yeah. He's number two. Whoa. Hold on. So you think it's Moss? Yes. T.O. Yeah. Then Jerry. You're really trying to stay on this podcast, huh? <laughs> you want this to break up? <laughs> that's, very, that's very admirable of him. That's very it's, admirable of him. But like, what do you rank yourself as? I, 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 if you want to, if you if he wants to put Randy at number two, Jerry one mm-hmm. and T.O. one A. See, I, I just I don't put Jerry in there because here, Jerry had everything what? for him. He had the quarterback, the, the quarterback yeah. number but that's one. That's not a discredit Cut, to Jerry. No, I'm though. not discrediting. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying he had more help. No, no, is no what no, I'm no, saying. Right? He, no, no. He, he's he's look. Right. You had a he you had from a, Joe Montana to Steve Young. 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 He didn't have a he didn't have a drop off. So how do we define greatness? Is it numbers or rings? No, rings have nothing to do with it. Rings have nothing to do with it. Because there are a number of great players that, that don't have, have rings. Barry Sanders didn't have a ring. The right. very guy that you're talking right. about. Yeah. Dan Marino didn't have a ring. That's right. You Randy Moss. Randy Alex, didn't have a ring. What about... What about um, Randy Moss is great. He doesn't have a ring. Right. There's a number of guys that yeah. are great that doesn't yeah. have rings, rings. So it doesn't we, define you. Sometimes it, guys just get lucky. To be yeah. on the right There's a number team. of guys that you don't even know, not know of. They got Super Bowl rings. So you think they're better than me? Yeah. You're saying I, I, yeah, yeah, or you're in agreement. I'm agreeing with you, yeah. Oh, okay. That's yeah, a yeah. first. That's yeah. a good. We got there. We're, we're making progress. We're making so, so the green jacket means more you, than the, the ring. But do you think? Absolutely. What the players say, like, so the players say, like, if the players were to do the top 100, which they should have the players do it and yeah. not some writers, that list would be whole, uh, totally different. There's a corner. It's probably the top three corners that ever played this game, and he'll never be in the hall. And his name is Dale Carter. If you talk to any receiver or DB, in the last 30 years, they will put Del Card in the top three ever as yeah. a corner. But yeah, he'll Del, never be in the hall. He's a dog, though. He, yeah, was, he was a, a dog. dude. Why won't he be in the hall? Because he, he media, he, you know, was a dog compared to what the media thought he was. Oh. But he Didn't, doesn't fit the criteria fit the for criteria. what? He yeah. wasn't a great teammate to everybody. What all that stuff that they want to see now, he wasn't that dude. But when to go out and to go out and take away your number one receiver he and do, do it... it Every game, all game. What is your opinion on, um, <clears throat> excuse me, there was a little beef between, uh, recently between, uh, oh my God, I can't believe I'm blanking on his name, but the- Richard uh, Sherman? Yeah, it was Sherman and- Darrell Reeves. Uh, and Terrell, Darrell yeah, Reeves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, what is your yeah. take on Sherman, first of all? You guys he's a, he's a good. Yeah, I think he's, he's a good, legit, solid yeah, legit corner. corner. Yeah, and like, so is Darrell Reeves. But again, if you take those two corners and you put them from 2005 to 2015 or 2008 to 2018, they're still not going up against number one receivers and taking them away. So they can, neither one can talk. Not they, even Darrell? I thought Darrell just shut down. They just put did you Did you on? see what Moss did to that boy? No. When he made him pull up, he said he. There was no way he was never going to go up against T. Moss, Julio Jones, one on one with no safety over the top. Neither one would do it. So I'm not putting them in those so lockdown. Back in the day, one, that used to be the case where it would be one guy: Dale Carter, Deion Sanders, Deion, those yeah, t- uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. James Hasty, those type of players. With safety was in the middle of the field, and the corner was one on one. That's a true one on one. What um, Darrell is saying: there's a safety over the top whenever Richard Sermon's going one on one. So that's help. That's what they he's call in the help. Cover Two. A cover two, um, like a, a two shell, right, a right. safety over the top. And he also doesn't travel, right? He just plays he doesn't one travel. Side of the ball. Yeah, that doesn't mean anything. And right. And then again, if a guy doesn't, if a guy doesn't, important. if a guy doesn't travel, maybe that's just a defensive philosophy Philo- or right. their, you their can't blame scheme. That on the corner. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. If a guy wants to say, "Oh, let me travel with this guy," then yeah, kudos for him. But if that doesn't fit the scheme of a defense, then you can't discredit a guy yeah. for what he what the, what the team is requiring of him. Right, right, right. That's fair. Yeah. That's fair. Again, it's like the, blaming you for not running the ball. Exactly. Like that's not your yeah, position. Yeah, 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 position. Yeah, 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 Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Absolutely. fine. But again, fine. I, I just thought that was it was a it was kind of a petty argument. But again, Sherman is on his way, you know, he's trending down as far as physically, his yeah. body he just can't keep up with some of the guys and for him to kind of take that one play out where the dude ran right by him, like that's gonna happen because again, no corners out there can cover a receiver one on one all game right now. Just receivers are too good. How do you how do you know when enough is enough? Your body will tell you, in my yeah. personal opinion. Your body starts to just getting up is just different at the age of 28 and 32. Like you just, it's, you're hurting, you're sore. It's like you can't recover. You, used to re- you could fall down or you can get hurt in, on a Sunday and be back on <clears throat> Wednesday. 
But when you start, okay, I got to skip Wednesday's practice and then Thursday I'm kind of back and then Friday I'm barely back, like your body kind of tells you. And I and I didn't realize it either because you, when you're playing, you're always going to think, okay, you can, mm-hmm. can pl- you can play. You can continue to play on mm-hmm. and on and on. But I started to listen. No, you try to listen to your body, but even the coaches, they noticed too. Like when I had a day of rest, this was later on in my career, especially when I was with Buffalo. And so they saw like if I had a day, day of rest, the next day, my energy was, they, they saw I was just flying. It, it was a noticeable difference of a day of rest versus just practicing back to back to back. Mm-hmm. So that's how you know, like, okay, obviously, you know, father time catches up, but it's all about how you take care of your body too. So nutrition, mm-hmm. um, everything that I did, you know, leading up throughout the course of my career, that's what factored in and enabled me to play the number of years that I did. And eating healthy, like I said, the nutrition part, it allowed me to bounce back from injuries as well and recover from injuries. Yeah, I was a bubble guy. I could never take a day off. So I, I don't guy. know. Um, I could get cut at any day, any time. <laughs> like, oh, you know how you say take you, a day you, off? You, if you, I were to take you. a day off, no, that wasn't happening. I had to go out there and, and practice. Did y'all fuck a lot? Like, you know how in fighting, like, uh, when you box. <laughs> That's hilarious. When you box, you can't, like, fuck the four fights. It just came out like a regular question. Did y'all fuck no, a lot? Like, you know, y'all, I, y'all tra- play every training week, camp, I, training camp I, didn't ask, yeah. I didn't have sex. Every, I didn't have sex during training camp. Wait, don't camp. you have I a never, crazy story? I never, I never even thought about it, to be no, honest. No, no, this is Because there are times like this, yeah, you've had, sometimes, like, I'm, I'm sure, I don't know, boxers say they abstain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then I've, I've, it's just like sleep. Like, I've had some of my best games and not even sleep that well versus sleeping eight hours feeling like okay you need the the maximize your rest time gotcha. but sometimes sleep deprivation that has been sometimes like been been the best thing that happened to me sometimes a lack of sleep or not sleeping enough <laughs> short on sleep it's helped. best games but as far as like having sex you know night before whatever if you can do it if you can if it happens then yeah i mean it's no different than i'm sure guys jack off but what's the difference Fun. What's the difference? Demanding. Uh, <laughs> right, but you're still exerting a lot of energy. You yes. still, you know. Yeah, you getting the cum out of your balls. I, I hear you. There wasn't That's, there a story. Yeah. Wasn't there a story where like you wanted to you you like your na- dated your neighbor. And then it, it turned what? out it was like they, you were related or something like that. No, that was no. no, no. That's how I found out who my dad was. I was okay. t- like I'm a preteen. I'm like 11, 12. Yeah. Um, I live with my grandmother. Um, it's a neighborhood full of kids. Um, right across the street, there were a house full of girls, four girls. And I didn't know at at that point, that time, that playing playing you know we, what were we playing kickball or whatever. Females Kick in the neighborhood. Ball. I'm a preteen. Start liking girls. I start liking one of the girls in the neighborhood. They happen to live right across the street. I used to go across the street, watch TV, hang out with everybody. Come to find out, one of the girls that I ended up liking was my sister. Wow. I didn't know that my dad, that was my dad at that point mm. in time. So at the end of the day, that's that's the, that's the, the gist of, of that story. Y'all didn't have that, any physical attributes like? like no, no, like, there was no, no, uh, no. I mean, at that time, like I said, you... You don't really, know. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, thirteen, you don't really, fourteen. Yeah, 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 <laughs> like an avatar. You don't really, you don't really think, you know, think of that. And for me, and like I said, being a preteen, that wasn't the furthest thing, you know, in my mind. It's like, okay, it's female, you like a girl. You so know, how did how did it come to your attention? Did the, your dad well, say I, it? Who? No, because again, like I said, they start seeing that I was crushing on one of my sisters. So the one that I was liking was Lisa. So they were like, oh, Terrell likes Lisa, you know. And so it got back to my dad. And so we tree. had that conversation. <laughs> was like, yo. You can't like Lisa, blah, 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 and why, whatever. Lisa's your sister. So that was pretty much the gist of it. Now, how are you and your father now? Because I saw y'all on Fix My Life back I mean, in the day. I we're, mean, yeah. we're, we're cool. I mean, I think he, we, he kind of made some efforts after that show. Um, there was even some some incidents where he didn't he agreed to do the show, and then he kind of backed out of it. And then Iyana, you know, kind of talked to him and, um, you know, encouraged him to, to, to be on the show. Um, but, I mean, it's the show didn't really... Fix your life? It didn't fix your <laughs> relationship. You know what I mean? But other than that, like I said, it, it was good for me to fix it for a little bit. I though. think acknowledge, you know, kind of, you know, and even get some questions answered, you know, that I never yeah. really asked, you know, as I grew up, because I never asked my mom, like, okay, well, what happened and why this and why that? And so being on the show, like I said, that was the first time I ever saw my mom and dad sit in the same room, you know, for more than five minutes. Mm-hmm. So, you know, again, Iyana obviously. Being who she is and hosted a show, like she encouraged, you know, 
me to ask those hard questions and even them. So for me, it was fulfilling. I think it opened a lot of people's eyes and exposed them to kind of like how I grew up, who I'm at, who I am, what I'm about. And then again, there are a number of relationships that are broken that were similar to mine. And so, I mean, I even after the show ran into people, um, you know, on the streets that said that it gave them courage to, to, to reach out to mm-hmm. their mom or their dad that they didn't never really had a relationship with or try to fix, hmm. you know, their strange uh, relationship. Did it make you feel like a better man? Did you feel like you was missing something? Um, I, I mean, I think closer with to the wholeness. Well, the, the way that I am with my kids, I think, you know, um, I'm a better father uh, to my kids it. than my dad was to me. Mm-hmm. And I think that was uh, kind of a, um, a way to look at it, you know, as, as far as how I would like my relationship to be with my kids. Um, you know, I think now it's, it's something that I never really got to experience, you know, and so now with my kids, you know, just sharing that time, being around them. Mm. And then, you know, it's quality over quantity. You know, although I'm not in the same household, I try to make the time that I do spend with them quality time and make it count. What do you learn that from? though? Like, what do you learn how to be a good father when you didn't have an example of one? Um, you know, through it, life, I mean, life yeah, just life. And I think you just, you just, you, you kind of know what you miss. You know what I mean? And I know how I felt when I didn't have mm-hmm. a father. Um, and I didn't really have any uncles or big brothers to lean on. Um, so again, when you, when I talk about, you know, my coaches being, you know, father figures to me and I can, I can look at and other people's relationships and, and see how they are with their family or what have you. And just uh, that ab- absence of, of a father and that father figure in my household. And I know how I felt, you know, I know what now to offer my kids. Mm-hmm. So, and, and then like I said, life is precious. I mean, think about what just happened with Kobe. Uh, you see the pictures. Oh, that um, mercy. Yeah. You know, those things right Real. there, it it would make you want to have a relationship, with you know, your with your kids. Um, but for whatever reason, we asked my dad, you know, um, those hard questions as to why he didn't do certain things or what have you. He gave us our answer and I gave it this answer and I can only respect that. And I move on from it. So now, like I said, to be in a position to be a dad, be a father to my kids. Um, I think I'm doing a good job. Kobe was a big Philly fan. Did y'all have a relationship? Yep. Yep. Um, met Kobe in 99 um, when I was with the Niners, went down um, with a teammate, Merton Hanks. That was my first uh, NBA game. Uh, it was a Laker game. Got to meet uh, Kobe afterwards. He took a picture. It's on my it's on my social media, and so uh, and then I didn't I didn't learn that he was a Philly fan until I was actually playing with the with the, with the Eagles, mm-hmm. and so I got a chance to you know talk to him. Like went to several Laker Laker games uh, while in LA. Um, you know, talked to him. You know, after games, I got to meet his wife, his kids. At that time, uh, he didn't have the the last two. Um, uh, when I met him early on, but. Um, again, so uh, I saw him last uh, last season um, was with his oldest daughter, Natalia. Um, she played at Sage Hill High School mm-hmm. and my daughter plays at um, volleyball at Culver City High School. And so they played each other. So, you know, I didn't know he was at the gym. I didn't know who they were playing. I just walked in the gym. He was up in the stand. And so uh, he saw me. We ended up uh, just con- conversing, uh, chatting it up. And, you know, again, we were, he was talking about business, talking about being a father, uh, supporting his kids. And that's what I was doing, too, being there, supporting uh, supporting my daughter. That's something, again, mm-hmm. I never experienced, you know, with my dad. So just now to be present in my kid's life, you know, I think that's 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 the most re- remarkable thing. Because these are things that uh, make lasting impressions uh, on your kids. And so for me, like I said, you know, it hurt me deeply. Like I said, I'm almost get choked up talking about it. Because he was an inspiration to me, just mm-hmm. as Michael Jordan. Like I said, I didn't know anything about football. But when you think about some of the greatest to ever play the game, and you see people that that make impacts in people's lives, and set the and and be a barometer for success, Michael Jordan was that guy for me. And then I witnessed and I watched Kobe. You know, what I mean, watching him and just having, like I said, not an extensive conversation, but I watched how he worked. You know, you, everybody talk about that Mamba mentality. I had that sort of same approach with just not to the nth degree that he did because that was his passion. That was his dream. He wanted to be the greatest basketball player um, to ever live, like behind Michael Jordan. He wanted to be the closest thing uh, to Michael Jordan that we've ever seen. And I think he is, the, the, was the best clone we've ever saw, um, you know, to, to Michael Jordan. And so for me, that's what I, once I saw and realized my abilities and the coaches, 
you know, made me know that the potential that I had, that was something that I strive for. And I feel like I did it with my dedication, my, uh, my, my desire, my dedication, my discipline. I got to be the best receiver that I could be for myself, knowing that Jerry, Jerry Rice was, was the greatest of all time. Mm. And, and y'all say y'all know each other for 20 years, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we joke about it. We joke nine, about it. Like yeah. I said, we always talk about, you know, uh, he feels like, you know, Minnesota had the first big three before they we all did. had this big three. We but, did. We, ch- I, we changed I, I, and Ideally, we, he wasn't even a part of the big three. Wow. That was... <laughs> he doesn't seem like he's part of this podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey. <laughs> first of all, so <laughs> there we have you, it, ladies and gentlemen, the T.O. show. Let me tell you, we gave him a lot of love on the Breakfast Club. We gave him... You see, I got Talk too much. That's what you oh, said. Oh, that's what I you said. <laughs> hey, I'm to get his kill rating up. You know what? I doubt it down a bit. CDG, I doubt yeah. it down a bit because yeah. I know you got a lot of viewers. Yeah. Now people CTG know who Hatch is. Never heard I'm trying to get who are you? Yeah, yeah. I don't. Who is this guy? I'm, that's what I'm I want to know. Who's the new guy? <laughs> who's the you new guy? Yeah. I'm just saying. Oh but my goodness! You're you, the worst. The thing is, ever when when teams game planned us, there was three receivers that you had to look out for, and for us, it was four. JJ. And myself. Not when you were young. They didn't look out for you. They did not. You were not in the game plan. You were not in the game plan. No. It wasn't the T.O. that became You were not in the game plan. It was young T.O. It was one of those guys that you had to watch. No, it wasn't. Didn't nobody knew about Mac. Didn't I go 80 on y'all? Didn't I go 80 on y'all? Didn't I? Wait, didn't I go 80 on y'all? That was one of his six touchdowns that he had. You gosh dang right. You didn't go 80. Eight year illustrious career. You had 80 yard touchdowns? Against these bums. Wow. Yeah. And he over there. Well, let me guess. You were hurt that game. Game. No, I wasn't. You I sure? Didn't even, I didn't even sure? recognize it. I didn't even know you had it until you just told me. This guy. Okay. Now, you gotta how, how would they scheme for you early on in your <laughs> career? <laughs> they didn't would, scheme for him. No, no, Nobody I, schemed for a number three receiver. They but, schemed for the number one but, to throw at you. But what? No, let, I was, let, yeah, I let was him beat two us. or three yeah. in the progression. We already knew Jerry was our yeah. number one. Right. So to go through those progressions, you have a two, three, and a four. Right. And that's usually the tight end. Like I said, I, I'm, I'm being honest. I wasn't that guy. Yeah, but I was years, making right. my mark. I was emerging as an emerging. I was I was that guy becoming a star before everybody's eyes. But he can't sit up and say he was part of the big three. <laughs> what J3, was the big three? What was the big three? J- J- okay, so Moss, I'm going so to go. The, we, Where we, did he factor into we this had the three? He we, ain't even 3.5. <laughs> I'm, I'm about 3.5. <laughs> <I'm about laughs> he ain't even 3.5. So look, the, the 98 Vikings team <laughs> changed the way the whole NFL is seen right now. Okay. Because, right, you had Chris Carter, 6'2", 220 guy. Mm. Right? Legend. Jake Reed, 6'3", 220 guy. Mm. Maul, 6'4", 210. And then myself at 6'3", 215. Mm-hmm. Right, four three. After the, right, we set every single offensive record known to man that year. Right, the ninety eight draft. You saw all the defensive coordinators draft big, long corners mm. because of what we were doing. And since that year, all you've seen were big receivers being what drafted. Were we? We were six two and six three above. But y'all, was, but y'all didn't set the record. It doesn't you, matter. No, 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 no. Y'all y'all didn't I'm set talking the record, about though. the record. The it's best different. offense is different. To ever bro. hit the league was not y'all. It's it was not us. Y'all. It what was is that? It was us. That yeah. means that, okay, you okay. can't be in this conversation. Okay, cool. that's what you guys set the record. Thank you. That's a good point. And since '98, all you've seen that's what Julio Jones, AJ Green, that's all you see now. Big receivers, all big. But before those guys that he just mentioned, who was on the forefront? Except the Patriots. Me. The teams that the win. The Trendsetter. That's Tom Question. Brady, though. Yeah. Tom, Tom Brady. Tom Brady. Since you've been doing this podcast. Yak, Rack, Terrell. That's my guy. Terrell, Terrell can what's you... T- what's Tio's oh. favorite subject to talk about other than himself? That's it. First of all, I... Knew... <laughs> <Yo>. <laughs> there I... is no... Terrell. There is no show without that. <laughs> Terrell, do that's you the purpose agree? Of... <laughs> that's, that's the purpose Terrell. of the show. Get your popcorn ready it's... with T.O. and Hatch. The, the... Eventually, yeah, we'll say way. It'll come, out. It'll come to talk his, about His me. favorite... Is his disappointment of him not making the top one? Of, I'm sorry, of us not, not making the top 100. Well, there's no us in this because we both didn't make the top 100. Top, top 100, 100 what? Football players of all football, time. Yeah, football players of all no time. Football. That was a big thing. That's that's his sore spot but right now. Go, but that's my thing. How'd you not make the get, top 100 if you're the I don't know, one A I don't receiver? Know. Right, exactly. Go go ask Joe Horrigan, the guys that that pa- <laughs> Duh, blue, yeah, blue Joe panel, Horrigan. That, yeah, don't that 26 yeah. panel. Oh. Blue, blue ribbon. We don't that's his favorite that topic. Kind of yeah. That's his favorite I mean, topic I think right that's now. disrespectful. I think you should be in it. But there was a theory that you had earlier. I remember listening to you on where you said that um, the best receivers are white guys. Did they help you win the Super Bowl the best? What? 
Can you expound on that? Who won the Oscars? Anybody? Who? Uh, <laughs> who won the Oscars? <laughs> I, 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 won the Oscars. Hey, shout out to our, shout out to our one boy, Matthew Cherry, who won the Oscars. Hey, everybody watching, please tune in to get your popcorn ready with T.O. and Hatch. Hashtag GPR. <laughs> exactly. Matthew. On the Himalaya app or wherever you get, get your, your podcast. podcast. Matt does movies. You did, you did a few movies, I right? do. I, uh, you exactly. said I produced a few films. Yeah, I produced um, Crew um, with Keith Robinson, Richard T. Jones, and uh, we swept the uh, ABFF that year. Um, so it was a critically acclaimed uh, movie. Uh, I did a movie called Take. Takers. Uh, the Take. take. The yep. take yeah. Brad Furman uh, directed that with uh, John Leguizamo, Tyrese. Rosie Perez. Rosie Perez was a beast in it. Bobby Cannavale. Um, so yeah, I like uh, I like to be you know on the other side of the camera. I've done some on camera stuff, but I like to kind of put the whole project together. I love Rosie Perez, and I say this in the most respectful yeah, way beast. possible. The reason I love her is because like she was like the first titty side titty mm -hmm. that people saw. No, not the side on do the right Actually, thing. Yeah. Where Spike Lee was rubbing oh, the I ice thought, on. White man can't yeah. jump. Man, like, and you just, That's the first titty you ever saw. White man yeah. can't yeah. jump yeah. in the in when she was wearing the tank top. Beautiful too. And you saw that side titty. But as a young oh, man, as a young dude. boy, as an eight year old, you were like, like that's man, the first titty. That's you were eight mind. when that happened. I don't know. I was like eight. around. Well, you know, what year was that? I was thirty. This is. What? You was 30, 30 when Do the Right Thing came out? No, I'm saying you, you're you probably 30 oh. something. I'm saying it's probably 40 years ago. It was probably 30 years ago. So he's close yeah. to eight. When, yeah, when, yeah, was, yeah. when was White Men Can't Jump? I was. When you 80? could not, yeah. I was 80, I was born in 83. You jump, it was, for, you, was, uh, for you, it was this morning. For you, it was every day. I will dunk on you, bro. <laughs> you I will dunk on you any you day of the week. No, you <laughs> cannot. 92. 92, nah. yeah, that's a minute ago. Yeah, 20, 30 years. Bro, you, you're, you're, you don't understand. My athleticism is deceptive because of the color of my skin. Okay? But I have you know that I will yam it in your have face. Have you ever seen him play basketball? <laughs> I saw him play against Jay Williams. I seen him play. He puts he puts stuff up on Instagram. Come on, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. come on. It's light work for me. Are there this any is, white players you respect, Tio? The one oh, that yeah, get yeah, all the yeah, rings, yeah. the wide receivers yeah. that get all Chris Hogan. Respect, you know, yeah, yeah. I respect Edelman. Because Edelman, of story. Welker. I love Edelman's story. That's like it. Said, just to to be, you know, like I said, a quarterback at Kent State, free agent, wasn't mm. supposed to make it. Um, and for him to do the things he's done as a, as far as his career, yeah, to I, be I one of the greatest wide receivers ever. He's, I wouldn't, you can't say that. Can't I'm just say saying the, the ones that win the rings. That that's a whole different it's white category. privilege, I guess. That's hilarious. No, I'm the white privilege is when he jumped on the hood of that car after the Super Bowl. And oh, nobody yeah, gave it. Yeah, yeah, right. He thought and you're <laughs> right, but if that would have been AB, they'll still be talking about it. Yeah. Yeah. right now. Yeah, he'd be in jail right now for that. What's going on with AB right now? Don't change the subject. <laughs> no, that too is white privilege. Exactly. <laughs> see? see? You he, see got, he got hot. But that's what happened. He got hot. That's he exactly. got hot over here for a second. Right, but that's exactly what happened. Get off the topic. Dude. <laughs> right, but that's exactly what happens in mainstream Bro, media. What does they the mainstream about, media do? You, what you just tried to do, just tried to Corona sweep it. Coronavirus. Just tried to sweep it under the rug. He's like he hasn't done anything. Coronavirus, Dio. Who started the coronavirus? But you want to highlight AB. Is that why he was throwing up? In the huddle. But you want to highlight AB? What? What? See what I'm talking about? Because AB's a loser, dude. But AB's a loser. You want to bring a right man out there? AB. No, he's not. Don't he's don't. a loser. Dude. Yes, he is. No, don't, don't he threw away that. his whole shit. No, don't say no, that, dude. He he sometimes, it, but first of all, sometimes it's not about the money. You can criticize Donovan McNabb but for it, boozing before the bro, Super Bowl, but not AB for throwing away his whole career. Wait, 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 wait. Why did he throw it away? He he has played like nine, ten years already. He's had a career. What are you talking right. about? It I away? think he was arguably the best. He was at least top three wide receiver in the game. I agree with that. And he could have made. Oh, so you wanted him to go 20 years? You wanted him to play 15? Maybe he was done. Maybe so he had. Maybe he's he had out enough. there begging Tom no, Brady to not. bring no, him not. back to, to, to miss you, bro. But he's already had his career. Miss though. you. You see what I'm saying? So he's cool. But, but he's we, not we cool. Have, we he have to admit back, he did bro. mishandle the last Absolutely. year. I agree with that. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. He mishandled the last year. And we can be critical when people mishandle. T.O., we're going to talk about you in a second, man. Come back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey Tom, it's not about him. You're on his phone. phone. Googling himself. <laughs> what am like, I doing huh? today? <laughs> <laughs> what, what's going on over here? It's his own callous and followers. <laughs> <laughs> what's on my Instagram? Why don't I just DM? Hey, yeah. <laughs> T.O., pay That's attention to what's going yeah, on. Cause he, yeah, because he's disrespecting A.B. I mean, this guy. He can disrespect himself, bro. No, I, I'm not no, condoning what he's. Last year, he's, he has I'm not his situation. I'm the biggest A.B. fan before all this nonsense. I'm I'm not condoning what he's done, but again, everybody has made some mistakes. He's made a handsome number of them. Does he probably need to get some help in some way, shape, form, or fashion? Yep. Fashion, absolutely. 
Has he mishandled some of those things which we just agreed to? Absolutely. But he didn't throw his career away. I wouldn't say that he threw his career away. If he has, I'm talking about if he doesn't play, the chance if, to play again, I think he's thrown that away. I think no. he's thrown that away too. That's all I, I'm saying. Not I, what he's I, done prior. I think just the chance to play I again. Think I think that he has and he still has an opportunity to play. You're looking at 32 teams. He just needs to play for one team. He'd have to be uh, perfect for these next six Trust months. me. He, his and even if he to were to get signed, there's going to be a lot of stipulations that goes in that into, the, in, into that contract. Yeah. You know what I mean? So again, but we and, he know, and, right, and he knows, he but and he, he know, and he knows that I'm an AB fan. Like I said, and he knows I've gone to his house. I don't condone the conduct in which he's shown over the last few months. And I've even said that to him, to his face. He mm. knows that I'm a realist. I, I went to talk to him as a person, as a man, mm. as a friend, regardless of everything that's going on around him, because clearly he didn't have the people around him to steer him in the right direction. You didn't like the language he was using towards his baby mom. That and then in front of your kids. Yeah. Mm. You know what I mean? So again, you got to, at some point, like I said, you have to be a, be a grown up. You have to be an adult. You have to be a father. You have to be something that you didn't experience and what you didn't have. And as I, as I mentioned earlier, like I said, we both share that same, that same space. We didn't have fathers in our, in, in our life, but we can make, our kids' lives better mm -hmm. by being something and doing stuff that you know our, me, our our dads didn't. Let me stay. Let me stay right there on that father piece, right? So, how do you know it's right if you've never seen it? That's real, right? Because as as a lot I mean, of African American you know. dads, right? That's the whole. Well, how do you know it's real? Your dad wasn't around, but I mean, like, how but do some you know things are just common sense. No, oh, I, I, yeah, some, of course, th some of things course. are just common sense. Like I said, even women that have kids for the first time they may not have had a mom right. you know you know growing up but you have to they <clears> understand <throat> they, they have to be a mother to their kids they find a way they well, we, figure well, it out well, you at learn, the end of the day you, you gotta be a person right like at the end of the day you have right. like a basic set of morality that you should live by I don't think it's that hard to just be like a decent human being well, whether but, you but have you, but you still gotta know my right father or, had a horrible father right, but you gotta know what right or wrong, right. Or wrong and is and sometimes you can learn just as much from right as wrong uh, absolutely so, yeah I think that's fair so sometimes if you at least have a horrible example you know what not to do if you have a great example you know what to do but if you have no example whatsoever you're kind of like what do I do? Okay, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. All right, you have kids? No, not yet. He's still wearing condoms. No, I don't do that. <laughs> you don't. You, I don't you wear both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, T.O. Yeah, yeah, yeah T.O. Yeah, Come on, no, bro. Come on, bro. <laughs> Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Come on. Don't leave me hanging, bro. Come on. You know what else they shouldn't leave hanging? Them passes I'm about to intercept if I guard you. That's a fact. You leave wow. that shit hanging. That's getting snatched right out the air, dog. Get your man. Look at this. Get your you see man. that, bro? You see that? He can't even look in his direction. You know who else shouldn't look? The quarterback. Because that shit getting intercepted. It. Don't look over here. Is it real? Is it really this a Schultz thing that you don't like to wear condoms? <laughs> really? Bro, <laughs> man, <laughs> Theo, like, fuck that one. No interceptions. Hey, really? Hey, <laughs> really? Hey, I give you more some doubt, bro. Hey, hey, bro, 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 bro. Yo, I need some dad, you know, bro. We, we, we trying to get, some, we trying to get, hey, we trying to get I some. Dog. We I have to get some sponsors I for the show. I have, I have some con, kids. We had a condom sponsor. Why we trying to get some? Like, no, we, we don't want it. Get the fuck out of here, bro. You, you don't believe don't in condoms, do bro. bro. You listen to this dude. You see, you listen to this dude. Look who he's befriending. This cornball over here. Listen, they should be doing a podcast. We really should. Y'all should. Y'all do too. Y'all two do it. It could be called Fast Guys. Yeah. That's hilarious. What? No, I'm gonna tell you what's happening right now. He doesn't know what to do with his hand. Yeah. See, black people, we know how we missed the dap. Like yeah. some, you know, like like like. That's it, bro. Hey, look, I got Come on, dog. Listen to Oh, thank you, bro. I got you. I got you. My man. I got you. When you're ready to have some water, open and every Thank you so much. You talk about language, right? A big thing that happened over the weekend. Because you said you didn't like the way Antonio talked about. His, to his baby mom. No, yeah, I mean, okay. in, especially in front of his kids. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. how did you feel about Snoop talking about to Gail, Gail King like that? Dude, it, it, was, it was it appropriate? Ooh. No. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Do I feel like she deserved it? Yes. Okay. Ooh. Considering, well, no, I, I, considering how the interview went. Got you, got did you. Did you see the whole interview? Nobody has seen the, the right, entire interview. The they saw like two, China. like they said, they said it was a five minute interview and yeah, two minutes of minute. it was about, about Kobe you and his trans... The, I saw the five minute, 36 seconds. And his transgressions. And the thing is, like, Kobe was never convicted of anything. Right. Kobe admitted to his wrongdoings. He apologized 
to her. He apologized to his wife. And that's where it should have lied. And that's where it should have ended. And he's moved on and he's been a better person from that. You haven't heard of Kobe doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. this, was, this wasn't an R. Kelly situation. Gail knew better than that. She's a journalist. Like, you know, going into to, to, to an interview like that, you know what questions you have. Whether, you know, they were approved by uh, the producer, network, producer, yeah. or whatever the case may be. Even if you have some type of moral compass, going into that, and you... And Lisa, you're asking Lisa Legend. Yeah, who, why are you asking who Lisa Legend? Yeah, that's that's, that's his that friend. Was, that, that was, was, was they were best friends. Yeah. That, they were like close. real close friends. Right. They played that ball was, together, the Sparks and yeah. Lakers. But right. what does so, she have to do with that interaction? She wasn't so there. She doesn't know of, anything. Like some type of moral compass. You're like, okay, I'm not asking that. You know what I mean? My thing is, I'm looking at the interview. I'm thinking initially, okay, it's a reflective piece about, like you said, the relationship, them being Lakers. The same time, you know, the the, the bond, um, his career, things of that nature. She went into it like it was a 30 for 30 or some type of documentary piece and mm. you're digging up dirt. Mm. Yeah. And then the fact that she can't, it, it almost seemed personal when she was like, well, well, Lisa, you wouldn't know that, would you? Yeah. That from that seemed yeah, dig, that another either. dig, like dig low. Right. That yeah. seemed personal to me. So, again, when you think about like something, like I said, she deserved the backlash that she's gotten. And, I, and as Bill Bellamy said, number one, she's black. You would think going into a situation like that, take care of us because they take care of them. Mm. Why not take care of us yeah, I in think, that situation? I think I can see where the anger, you know, came from. I, I, I think right. the anger was warranted. I don't know about the language. But that's dope. But that's and I'm gonna come see you. But yeah, that's another big bunch. She's 65 years old. Like, right, right. But I'm not gonna. And you're not, not gonna yeah. come see her. But I'm not. She yeah. don't know that. Stop, stop it. it. Stop she acting even, tough no, on what, fucking Instagram. Not, it's, you're a hundred. It's not him. It's what about some of the younger dudes that respect Snoop? Hundred yeah. percent. I heard what he just oh, said. I'm gonna try to impress you. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So I'm not. So I don't condone that. I think Matt Bond chimed in. Matt Bond chimed in. Matt Bond chimed in. Matt really will come see. Yeah, he right. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's that same energy. Yeah. But again, like I said, I don't, like I said, you don't want anything to escalate to that point to where somebody, to somebody is that hurt. That. Yeah. But that's where, that's where the love for Kobe is. Right now. Especially. Right now. And then just the, like I said, the timing of it. The guy yes. hasn't yeah, even been like buried yet. Yeah. Just the timing of it. And then just, for his wife, for yeah. the sake of his wife and his kids. Mm -hmm. And then you start digging up stuff. Like I said, he wasn't even convicted. I will say, though, her two questions weren't bad questions. No, no, I know. What were the questions? But it was the way she responded. Yeah, one, it was well, the pushback. The, the yeah, yeah, the rebuttal. Was the original one was, um, you know, people say his legacy is complicated. You know, because you of X, Y, Z. Exactly. Because and Lisa was like, it's not complicated for me at all. She answered at all. it. Right? right. The next one was, should people even be talking about this? You know, she just right. even be a topic of conversation, which also Lisa knocked out the park with right. an answer. Right. So right. those two conversations, those two questions weren't bad questions. It was just a pushback, though. God, oh, she like, kept, and she kept saying, right, like, more, kept more, digging more, and digging. digging. Yeah. Like I said, gotcha. I think that's Wait, what that's what people are upset about. That's what people are outraged about mm -hmm. because she of was in which the manner that she again the pushback yeah. when when Lisa gave her every opportunity to button it up. When she gave her answers and she kind of just left it at that. But then again, there was some comeback. Yeah, to the it. case wasn't dismissed because blah, the woman blah, blah. didn't show up. Like it was always some another. Right. Button. But there's a yeah. reason. As I'm saying, this is not a documentary piece. Mm -hmm. Just go on. Like to what the is the, what is what, what was the nature about? of the interview about? Yeah. Like just like this, it. Well, they want their clicks. The, it wasn't the night. They got yeah. their clicks. They're right, in the click business, but, and that's but and that's what Snoop point, is saying. Right, you're to, doing this for clicks. Don't do this off of Kobe's name. Right, exactly. That's, that's, that's reasonable. I think. I think the. I definitely think the criticism is reasonable. I do think that there's like a there. This like weird racial component kicked in where like you can't. It was like you're somehow. I don't know. You're somehow like um, going against your own if you're asking a question about someone's past. That is incriminating, and I don't think that's necessarily fair. I mean, oh, right, because, because that's because yeah. but that's context too. Oprah and Gail. Oprah so and people Gail. look at Oprah and Gail, and they think Oprah only targets black men to bring that them have been down. Right. But you yeah, haven't yeah, did yeah, that yeah. with Harvey, Harvey Weinstein, which is Weinstein, also Oprah, the Jeffrey uh, Epstein. Gail, Gail worked you, with uh, Charlie think, Rose. She worked no, for Leslie right, Vance. Right. You know, what I mean? you like talking. You don't think that they've tried to get Harvey Weinstein for an interview? Like I think everybody on the earth has tried. They got somebody. They got her friend. Right. So you're saying they should have got Harvey Weinstein's friends and get on there and talk. That's a great question. So no, Gail did interview Harvey's lawyer. 
Oh, she did. She did interview Harvey's lawyer. And what'd she say? I don't even know. I don't remember the interview, but she right. did interview Harvey's lawyer. That was like in November, October. It was like it was like during right. the fall of last year. Okay. Yeah. But I think there's also you know people have seen Gail but come to the. There, def- right. Was there any, you know, feedback? Feedback? Yeah, 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 yeah. Exchange like it was with Lisa. Yeah. With, I would, with I would the like to see that. Interview. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I don't to think it, it, was the, the it would be the same. Day. Yeah, and people and, this and video, it's a lawyer too. Yeah, and this video of Gail, you know, def- kind of, kind of like defending Charlie Rose. Right, the, kind of like, it's the, ba- it's the body language. It's and Al Frank and she didn't Frankel. do that. No type of defense. That's what I'm for saying. Kobe. She could see the benefit of the doubt with those situations. Right, but she can't not... see the benefit of the doubt with Kobe. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. the fact that again, it. like wow. the, the, the thing is, is Kobe hasn't. There was no repeat of his mistakes. Right. He made like, us... and he admitted to his wrongdoing. Like his, his marriage was on the brinks. He apologized to his wife, mm-hmm. and since then he he's made good on that. Whatever their talks were to move yeah. forward and be a best to forward. be a, to be mm-hmm. a best husband yeah. and a father, he had done that. So and maybe that, the criticism is 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 reasonable. I mean, I I tend to defend my Nubian queens, but you know, well, listen, I'm the first person is. to tell people you can't tell somebody <laughs> how to react, queens? but I can tell somebody if they went too far. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Too far. <laughs> like 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 right now. If, if T.O. was to get up and slap Andrew, I'd be like, yo, T.O., hey, cool out. Hey, yeah, hey, hey, no need. Like, I get it. You, you know think he's going to hit me? You went too far. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? I understand <laughs> why. Yeah, yeah. You went too far. <laughs> you think his 4'6 running ass is going to be able to oh, catch I'm, me? I'm on, I'm on the edge of catch my seat, so we I need to be on the edge. I'm on the edge of my seat over here. you sitting deep, I'm gone. You're going to hit me right on the edge. Hey, you better be thankful for your new podcast partner right here separating us. Listen, I'm on the edge of my seat. Damn, you breaking up another team, bro? <laughs> like, hey, he, he done kicked me to the curb over here. You know what I mean? He kicked me to the curb. He kicked me to the curb over here. How often did y'all podcast come out? Uh, uh, about a month ago, we just uh, yeah. Month, say how often? Once a week? Uh, every Tuesday. Every so every Tuesday, Tuesday okay. the, um, the the podcast comes. Can we out. get you on there? We'd I'd love to pull up. Yeah, yeah for sure. Come on, if you have an LA, LA man, for real. Then on uh, on Thursdays, the uh, the YouTube uh, portion of it comes out. So the video portion of it comes out. So we do it every Tuesday. You can show up on Sunday. We'll do you on Sunday. Perfect. <laughs> Ain't nobody going to be there. <laughs> nobody going to be there. All right, hold on. Let's take a break. We got to pay some bills, all right? Uh, let's talk about Boost Mobile, all right? Some of y'all out there with the Boost Mobile phone right now. Boost Mobile, okay? You finally have everything you could want in a wireless carrier. With no annual service contract, Boost Mobile offers a range of data plans and the latest phones from top brands at affordable prices. Their network is super reliable and super fast, so you can post up and watch the game. Or you can even stream this podcast to brilliant idiots almost anywhere, okay? We all know smartphones are expensive. Wouldn't it be nice to not force the family to wrestle over one? phone step up with boost mobile and you can get four free samsung galaxy a20 phones when you switch and if you switch to boost mobile today you'll get four lines for just 25 dollars per line per month step up with boost mobile and switch today if you want a super reliable super fast nationwide network to keep you connected switch now to boost mobile now limited time offer while supplies last, new customers only, requires port and activation from eligible carrier, one free device per line, users using more than 35 gigabytes of data during a billing cycle may be deprioritized during times of network congestion. Offers and coverage not available everywhere. Visit BoostMobile.com or retailer for full details. This episode is also brought to you by Mercari. Guys, it's 2020. Guess what? All that stuff in your home that you didn't use in 2019, yeah, it's still there. It's taking up space. It's making your apartment look smaller and smaller. It's making your house look smaller and smaller. Remember that beautiful big house that you bought or rented or living in? Remember that gorgeous room that you got in before you moved all that nonsense in there? Yeah, you can get back to that. And you can make money doing it by selling your stuff on Mercari. It's the selling app that makes selling almost anything fast and easy. Here's where you begin. Just go through your home, find all the stuff you didn't use in 2019, the phone in the drawer, those jeans, the ones you wore only once, that handbag in the back of your closet. You go get that stuff. All right. The listing takes only minutes. Take a few pics, add a description. Boom. Your item's connected to millions of buyers on the app. It's free money. Literally free money. Just go do it. Go get money for the things you don't even use. Mercari's even going to email you a shipping label when it sells. You don't even have to get your own shipping label. I don't even understand why I have to convince anybody to do this. This is no nonsense. It's the perfect solution. Go get some free money. Everything ships so there are no awkward meetups with strangers. The app has over 500,000 reviews on the App Store with a 4.8 star rating. So why not give it a try? Ring in the new year with less stuff in your home, more money in your pocket with Mercari. That's M-E-R-C-A-R-I, Mercari, the selling app. Let's get back 
to the show. Put T.O. and Matthew, uh, Matthew Hatchet. Get your popcorn ready. Hashtag GPR, baby. Yeah, yeah. I want to thank y'all for coming, man. Man, oh, my man. mom, I appreciate you. It pronouncing my name right. I'm going to be honest with you. If you hadn't said it this morning, I would have been saying Terrell right now. <laughs> I know. Terrell like, sure, like Cheryl. That will be stuck in my head. I never thought about it. Right it's T.O. Like you know what I'm saying? Terrell like but Cheryl. But that's, that's usually the de- default, you know, when people can't pronounce or they have some questions about what to call me, they just say T.O. Do you feel like you missed out on the social media era? Oh, absolutely. Oh, man. Because I, oh, as I alluded to earlier, the things that were going on, like I said, it's just like that. They kind of were the social media era in a <laughs> way. Yeah, but it's just yeah. like the, yeah. we were just talking about mm-hmm. the interview with, with, with Gail and Lisa. If you don't see the entirety of of the interview, then all you have to go by is the clip, Mm -hmm. that edit of that whole clip. And that's what happened when I tried to explain no, 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 no. you know what I'm saying? My side of the story. This is like I've done, like I said, hour and a half sit downs of whatever the situation was. But you, you only get that the the world don't see right. But the world doesn't see the entire hour and a half. Mm -hmm. They only see like five, ten minutes of what they show in clips from that that interview. Wait, what so it, they did me a disservice. So it's, again, like yeah, to be in an era yeah, now where you have the, 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 to have the the social media platforms and have a voice. Where again, back then we were voiceless almost. We were yes. at the we were at the mercy of what was being media. Of yeah. media. Yes. That's all we so had. again, you, you couldn't talk, control your own narrative. Right, back exactly. Then. Right. And then like I yeah. said, you talk about the skip bases, bro. They liars. Like bro, like I said. Could I have handled some things differently? Absolutely. But I wasn't, and I didn't do the things that they said I did. To be a disruption yeah. in a locker room and say that I was that on every team, you would have to really go in that locker room and talk to all 53 guys. And if there's a large percentage of guys in every locker room, then okay, I'll agree with you. I was a distraction. But you can't talk to a coach here behind closed doors getting a little sound a sound bite for your story or a player here that may not have liked me or what have you and then say they speak for the locker room. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's what they did for the majority of my career. So, yeah, what I like I said, I definitely, like I said, I would have flourished, <clears throat> thrived in an era like this, especially with all these social media platforms. What, what would you have done uh, on social media that year you got suspended from the Eagles? What, 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 I would have what I would tried would you- I would have tried to really explain my side of the story. So again, like I said, Donovan got mad because of a of a clip that I had done with uh, Graham Bensinger. I met this dude. I met this dude. He was in high school when I was with uh, the San Francisco 49ers. Met him coming out of the locker room after a game. He was in high school. He said, "I'm gonna be a journalist one day." Like, will you give me an interview? Then th- I was like, "Yeah." Didn't think too much of it. Fast forward to uh, 04, or whatever it was 04 or five. He goes to Syracuse or whatever. Now he's working for ESPN. He reaches out. He's like, "Yo, T, remember?" You told me in high school I could do an interview. I did the interview. I granted the guy the interview. They asked me a few questions here and there. One of his questions was, you know, uh, our record was like seven, four and three at the time. And so see, I don't know why he asked the question, but he's like, and we got to talking about Brett Favre and some other quarterbacks. So he's like, yo, he's like, you know, if uh, what do you think about Brett Favre? I was like, yo, he's a great quarterback. He's like, man, if you had Brett Favre as a quarterback, do you think you guys would be a better team or something right now? So I said, yeah, I would agree with that assessment. You know what I mean? Just giving respect, not Favre. just not discounting um, McNabb, not, yeah. but I was giving kudos to and respect to Brett Favre mm-hmm. and what he's done. So that that soundbite created a firestorm the next day. Oh, Terrell says something about Donovan McNabb, throws him under the bus, this and that. And that's how, that's where things kind of went downhill. And they didn't see the entirety of the interview because I said it easily because Donovan had been injured that year. I said easily. If Donovan wasn't hurt, we would easily be sitting here six and one because we got beat by Pittsburgh like bad that year. So we were four and three. I said we could easily be six and one right now if Donovan wasn't hurt. Mm. But they never nobody ever read or never heard of none of the good stuff that I was saying. They just went off the edit, the a little bit of the transcript. And that's where things went downhill because if it bleeds, it leads. So I got to go with the negative. Right. But so, they suspended you for a whole year for that? Yeah, after seven games. Yeah, I had played like seven games and then things kind of just started. Yeah, that kind of just, it just kind of unraveled. And then Donovan, like I said, it, we had just come off the Super Bowl That's year. Uh, I went into training camp. That was the year that I did the sit-ups. You know, Andy, me and Andy had a disagreement at practice. He sent me home. And so the reason I did the whole sit-up thing, because he's like, yo. Well, that's when you was in your driveway working out. Yeah. yeah. So he was like, Horrible. go home. And he's like, we'll see you when you get when we get back to uh, get back to Philly. Yeah, make sure you keep yourself in shape or whatever. So I so I didn't know I got got back from got back to Morristown from 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 Lehigh. It was an hour and a half, two hours, I think. I'm in my house. I didn't think I wasn't thinking nothing of it, didn't know what to do. Next thing I know, I hear helicopters 
going around the house. Then I look out the, the blinds. I got media trucks in the yard. And then they start knocking at the door. They want to, So I looked at it, left. They kept knocking. So I just tried to appease the media, tried to have fun and make light of the situation. So again, I remember Andy said, oh, make sure you work out. So that's why I brought the bench out just to say, okay, Andy, I'm still I'm so working you're, out. So you were doing it to be funny. Yeah, I just and tried to make light, it it, make light of the situation. So I, you know, I didn't think too much of it. And then, like I said, the rest is rest is history. Is that really the only reason they suspended you? Just because you said something about Donovan McNabb? Yeah, because Donovan, like I said, at that point, it got so bad. And Donovan wanted me, like, I made a public apology. Got through, a, um, through, my, um, through my publicist, wrote something out. Read it. So the thing was, um, she had sent it uh, via fax, sent it to the uh, to the to the training room, not the training to the equipment room. So they got it. So they somebody whoever got the fax, they saw what was on there. So I went to the team captains. One of the guys were Jeremiah Trotter. I was like, yo, I said, I got to go do a press conference. This is what I got to read, blah, 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 blah. So I gave the I showed it to um, showed it to Trotter. He read it. And it's basically was saying, I apologize to the organization. It has some personal thing, you know, point, uh, 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 pointing out, um, singling out Donovan, this and that. And that. So Trotter was like, don't do this. Don't do that. So that's what I did. Team captain, he read it. I'm like, all right, cool. So I'm like, okay, I can see why he say take that out because I apologize to the team and the organization. He's part of the team. Why single him out individually? So that's what I did. And so then it got back. To the coach or whatever, I had after I had done the press conference and, and up top that I didn't read out the entirety of what was sent over. So then, talked to Andy Reid. He wanted me now to make another apology in front of the team to Donovan. I'm like, nah. I'm well, like, that's why, why they suspended you. So why why do I got to specifically point him out? I was like, I apologize to everybody, mm -hmm. the organization. But you included. pointed him out initially in the interview, even though the, the question was asked to you, but you still singled him out. The media singled him out. Like I say it wasn't a direct. Knock Why not on just him. apologize? No, because the, I already did that. If I apologize, I, I didn't. I included. I think, time. I think you're right, Matthew. At but the, at the time, just let it go. Right, right, right. Just yeah. apologize. Who gives a fuck? But, but at that time, I didn't see a need. To, what am What am I apologizing for? It doesn't matter because, because of his feelings. Cause yes, because of his feelings. That's why so, we apologize. So what about my feelings? Who cares? Care Win a exactly. Super Bowl. Okay, okay, it doesn't matter. He didn't need me the year I don't before. You don't care about his feelings? No. I care about winning Super Bowls. <laughs> okay. If that's Just okay. apologize to the that's quarterback. Okay, if the quarterback's it, a so baby, you're not a baby. Okay. Well, you know that the baby needs to be nurtured. So but, nurture but, the baby. But, give him a titty. If, let him get some milk. If it was a white quarterback, I wouldn't have apologized. Being it was a black Jesus. quarterback. But, but, it, but, yeah, but it was you, you I wouldn't yeah. apologize. <laughs> no, but, I, but, I, but, I, but I get that. But at this point in time, things had gotten so bad. Like I said, he had already showed... His true colors toward me, and and yeah, even yeah, guys, yeah, even yeah, people in the organization that worked at, they even pointed out things that I was it's oblivious to. Yeah, it's all so bad. at this point, I'm like, nah. So it wasn't just that isolated incident to where I'm like, oh, I felt like I couldn't, I couldn't uh, apologize to him. Maybe on different circumstances, had it been like a one off, then yeah, I would have been man enough to do it. But I, it was things that led up to the point of is, like, is nah. This after you challenged him to a fight. Yeah, this was after that. Oh, okay, okay. So this was this was this a bad relationship, right? So at, at this point, point, it was it was after that, and so he was trying to throw his weight around at this point in time, asking and oh, I need a public apology in front of the team. No, I'm not doing that. And then when I didn't do it, Andy, they was yeah, going to Washington go. that following week. He goes, "Okay, I'm gonna sit you out. We'll address it. This, and that, and the other." But I, all, I 100 percent guarantee, Donovan went there and was like, "No, I don't want to play with him. It's either me or him." You think it was jealousy? You think both of y'all had an ego? He was bro, used to being the guy. Trust and you me, I, the there guy. was no ego with me, bro. Mm -hmm. I like he said earlier, he alluded to like I can't, I can't, I couldn't have done the things that I that I did on the football field without the quarterback. And no matter what the situation was, I didn't take it onto the field. No matter what, when we in between the lines, that's my guy. But he didn't seem to be that way. And Which everybody's not on your team. Everybody's not going to be that way. So mm -hmm. again, yeah. like I said, I never, bro, I never had any hate toward Donovan. No envy, no nothing. Based on, again, like I said, I'm sure a lot we of things. We got to get things, Donovan on the show. A lot of things. Right, yeah, but I, I guarantee a lot yes. of things that factor to him being in Philly and way the way they didn't embrace him. Virtually when he came out and they needed, they were there was a pick between him and Ricky Williams. They wanted Ricky Williams. They ended up getting him and they booed him, this, that, and the other. And the way when I came over from San Francisco, they lit up the city. They embraced me. I scored a touchdown. You got the, the whole stadium chanting my name. That couldn't have set well with him. 
But that's not my fault. That's, that's crazy. Not, that's not my problem. And these are things that were brought to my it's, attention. It's his, yeah. it's his house. He right, moved but, into his right, house. But these are things that were brought to my attention that they felt that rubbed him the wrong way. Very weird relationship for a quarterback and wide receiver to have, though, because he's throwing you the touchdown. Bro, yeah. trust me. It's, I, y'all, it's, it's a team it's game. Ego, it's I remember, bro, when I came over there, room. I already knew what the stigma was for me coming over there. That, oh, he was just, he's, he's disruptive. He's going to be causing problems. This, that, and the other. I didn't come over there with no ego. I even said in my press conference, I said, look, I'm not coming here to steal anybody's thunder, anybody's limelight. They brought me over there because of what I've done. They, they, they didn't get, they had, Four chances to get beyond the NFC Championship. You sure this wasn't about women? Y'all wasn't fighting over the five or six tens in Philly? Right, right, right. Again, women, no. Playing Taylor. (laughs) (laughs) But again, (laughs) it was was nothing like that, dude. Trust me, when I I saw him, met him at the Pro Bowl the year before when I was with with the the Niners. you're not a threat then, of course. It's all good then. You're not a threat. And then when I got over there, it was a different story. Bro, if if Donna was sitting here right now, I was say I would say the exact same thing that I'm saying right now, bro. Is that true, Donovan? Yeah. Same thing right now, bro. That's <laughs> on bro, that's on Maybe everything. y'all need a conversation, bro. Man. Yeah, you, you know why I say that? No need to go bro. to the grave with stuff like this. When right. you look at like what happened with Kobe, God yeah. bless the dead, and you yeah. see how, you know, uh Kendrick Perkins reached out to Kevin Durant. Like all of this yeah. stuff is just like sports at Shaq the end of the day. Shaq and Kobe yeah. and thinks about all the time he wasted Shaq's where he crying like, yeah. yo, we didn't get a chance but to I don't do this and that. I don't. You don't we feel never, it today. We but never really had a relationship happen. like that. But you're still upset, dude. You've been talking about it for like 30 no, minutes. No, you guys are bring, talking yeah. about it. So I'm just <laughs> no, giving you. Kind of, no, I'm just giving you. I'm just we talked you. about it already. You brought it back. I think no, you got dude, a real bone to pick, Madonna. Yeah. No, he's just bailing him out. I think he's bailing him out. We got him. We were we were wrapping up, and he was like, "One more thing about Donovan." And then, yeah, yeah. So who? You? I think that there's something in here where you guys could. Hey, man, kill yourself. <laughs> that's what we do I'm here. On, that's what we do here. Kill <laughs> yourself. That's what we want to say to Donovan. No, seriously, a great podcast <laughs> but, episode. Would you be? You guys talking? I mean that. But I don't know. Bro, bro, bring no, unreal bro, content. Bro, Over soup. Unreal. Over soup. Over soup. Wow. They they paid yes. me then. Yeah. But wow. I, other than that, no, I don't see a need to, bro. Content, because baby. Again, like, no, I don't need no content, bro. Well, he's trying to stay. He's trying to stay relevant. I'm not. Let it. No. He the one. He the one did the show with Master. What is it? Master Chad. Or Master T, whatever know, it is, somebody. he did the untold <laughs> stories, bro. I don't need to do that, bro. Yeah. I thought we had discussed it. I've seen him out. I've I thought it was cool. And stuff so, like that just helps uh, the people who already try to paint a narrative of you being a negative teammate. That helps, helps them out. Them when he's out. Right. Like that. So they they get them on there, call them out as bullshit, bro, and then clear your name. No, I they don't need to. They're gonna be on there to, crying. Bro. I guarantee. No, I don't they're need gonna be to. They are. I guarantee. It's gonna be brotherhood, man. I'm gonna play some amazing grace in the in the background. Right now, I, don't, sweet I don't need to. Like I said, he had ample opportunities to, <laughs> to be to speak politically correct when he needed to, but when it came to me, that wasn't the case. Even like I said, when my contract came up, Westbrook, he spoke vouch for Westbrook to get his money, but when it came to my money, it was not. Yeah. Yeah. He, didn't speak, he didn't speak that way. You know what I mean? So, you know, it's just me and you. It's me and you. So it's all good. They can go do their own podcast, Question. y'all. Does Jerry Jones... <laughs> we can do our podcast, does, own podcast. Does Jerry Jones share his women? Does he what? Does he share his women? <laughs> oh, I'm sure. I'm probably sure he does. I don't know. I'm, I, I, he never pos- passed him to the team? Like, Jerry Jones? No. Yeah. You never seen the pictures of Jerry Jones? Women? What? You're right. He's he, 80. It don't matter. Yeah. He got the, he got, he got Let me show you the pictures. You he don't remember this? Fans. Right, but if he had with somebody black owner doing what he doing, that'd be crucified. Yeah, you're right. And he ma- he's married. He'd be crucified. He ain't even married. Let you don't remember these? Remember all the pics, man? Crucified. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, crucified. Jerry. I never crucified. seen these. I know, because y'all hang out together. Y'all don't never see. Y'all would never see nothing. Y'all wouldn't see nothing. Go, your boss. Let's see. Go. Jerry don't share those with the team? <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe with Michael Urban. I wasn't really. I wasn't. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't yeah, like yeah. in the nineties. I wasn't one of his guys. I wasn't part of the triple. I wasn't. I wasn't part of the triple threat. Oh, y'all never had a relationship. You didn't stay the night at Jerry's house, like no, nah, really, no, nah, no. Nah. It was strictly business. Man, I mean, I thought it was. I mean, if it was strictly business, I mean, he wouldn't have listened to Romo and Witten and, and Garrett to get me up out of there. Hold on, so Romo, Whitney, and Garrett are the reasons that you... Oh, that was part, that's part of it. After you cried? Damn. <laughs> bro, trust me. Bro, hey, it is what it is, bro. 
But like I said, I'm a so bad on, guy. So but I'm a more. bad guy though. But I don't know. I gotta, hear, I gotta hear the whole story. Yeah, but I'm a bad guy though. I gotta hear the whole story. I'm let, let somebody else. Let, let me need to have some other guys in here to tell the story. So Romo because if you Garrett. tell, I'm good. You, yeah, you can't be, tell. I can't tell. It's not gonna be. It's gonna not gonna be. It's not gonna be believable. Well, why let someone else tell it? That's because they were in there from a selfish point of view. Exactly. It's gonna come from another. So what do you think? We want to hear your POV because they can respond later. What? Why do you think Romo Whitney and Garrett went to get you out of Dallas? So after my third year, um, I had just got an extension. Um, Jerry called me. I remember exactly where I was, high rise and, and, and uh, on McKinney Street, McKinnon. And so uh, he called me. And this was right before um, they opened up in the Jerry's world. Yeah. So he kind of asked me, like, you know, what do we need to get over the hump? By this time, like I said, this is, I think, uh, Garrett's first or second year uh, coaching. Um. And so he asked me my honest assess- assessment of what we need to do to, to get to, to that next level, try to get to the Super Bowl. Um, I gave him that. And he was like, all right, cool. Was like, I'm looking forward to, you know, opening up the, the big stadium uh, the next year. What was your assessment, though? Um, that we need to kind of get more people involved. You know, I think there were things during the course of that that final year that uh, I brought to the attention of some other guys, and they noticed it too. Where you know Romo was favoring, you know, uh, targeting Witten more so than other guys when other guys were open. And that's the thing when like I you, but no, no, but I was, that, but, but that's what I'm about. But before he said that, I was about to allude to. It wasn't even about me getting the ball. So you it was number about two receiver. You it was about two. other. It was other guys. You know, during the course of the game. That were open, but he would throw in the double team coverage. We would point these things out in practice behind closed doors and things that we had in discussion that between myself and Garrett and other guys, receivers that we thought would never get out. And then somehow the next day, the media knows what we're, we're talking about. Mm-hmm. So um, there are things that I kind of uh, kind of made people aware of. Um, and then I think after that, um, Jerry took your assessment back to the team mm-hmm. and they was like no he's the problem let's get him out of here so again those are like I said those guys were part of the reason why I, I, I didn't extend because I had just signed an extension mm-hmm. so if I was a problem they give why, why did he get me an extension and to my what I talked about earlier on the show when I got released the NFL they, they have to file a paper of why I was released it didn't have anything to do with conduct detrimental and any other things that that the boxes that that were that were supposed to be checked, they checked performance based. What was the performance thing? I have no idea. You said it on the Breakfast Club. You don't want to say it here because that's a straight perfor- alley oop. My, my, <laughs> my, my, but my performance, like I said, I was one of the top. Like I was a top receiver. Tell them what it was. Tell them what it was. Tell them what it was. Like I performed. Like I was one of the top receivers in the league. And what was it, Matt? Say performance. Give him the ball. Was it? No, that was too slow. It's because oh, you were too oh, yeah, slow. Yeah, yeah, because he was. It's because you were too slow. You were, you were, you were trending hey, hey. down. Gallop, gallop. <laughs> you lost a step. You sound like Trump. You Anything were trying, that comes bro. out of your mouth. You were trying, just bro. BS. Yeah, is it? Yeah, just Let BS. Let me tell you something. We didn't need yeah. a wall to stop you. Okay, you were stopping <laughs> just you. BS. Yeah, a wall. But, but to my point, like I said, those are some of the things. Like I said, you know that that happened. So again, like I said, Yo, if it that was all happened if, after that one conversation. Yeah, because. So maybe, maybe this was Jerry after the, se- the conversation. So this was after the this was after the season. So mm-hmm. it had to be like December, like January. Right. So there was an owners meeting. I lived in Miami at the time. My agent lived in Miami. There was an own owners meeting up in Fort Lauderdale. He called my agent and said, "Oh, we're going to be in Fort Lauderdale. Let's have a meeting." Blah blah blah. So my agent called me up. I'm like, "Oh, we're going to be meeting uh, Jerry and Steven at this hotel." Blah blah blah. And it was we thought more or less about. Moving in in in, in, a, in a direction for the next season, we got in the, into the meeting. We sat down at the table. Um, Jerry was here. I think Stephen was there. I was here, and uh, I think uh, Drew and I think my other agent was sitting there. And so he started talking about the organization. You know, kind of just isolating. You know, things within the organization. And then he would put me over here in, in a category. So after he did all of that, um, he drew. Uh, he started writing on the table like Cowboys. T.O. Romo. T.O. Like team. T.O. Organization. Everything associated with Cowboys on one side. And you was on the other side. So then he took out a pen, had the pen, and then he drew a line in between us. That's Jerry Jones? Yeah, he drew a line in between all that. He said, we're going to have to part ways. That's how I was cut. Okay, so so that that conversation, right, when it sounds like when, when you were talking, 
he was taking what you were saying as you were putting yourself on that side. No, no, but I never said that I was wanting the ball. When he asked me about yeah. the assessment of what we needed to do as an offense, as a team to move forward, mm -hmm. I was giving him an, my honest assessment, but it wasn't about Maybe me getting— Maybe he didn't want honest. But that wasn't That's my— Right, like. but I thought as a me being the top, one of the top players on the team, him being the owner, he was coming to me to get some feedback on what— that we needed to do as a team you, and an organization. You, you know, a black wide receiver will not have uh, no, I, no 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 weight when it comes to a white quarterback, black, but, a but white I, franchise but tight end, coach, and a head coach. But yeah. if he's coach. calling me and asking me, like I said, I know how he's, he's not calling you for but, honest but, but, answers, right? But I understand, I understand what he had done in the relationship that he had with like Charles Haley, the Emmitt Smiths the Troy Aikmans. So I felt like okay, I'm now one of those guys that he can lean on to get yeah. an honest. Set assessment up, of what needed to be done to to get to to the Super Bowl. That's what they brought me to help to do. So that was really the nature of the conversation, and that's what I took from it. I wasn't thinking anything outside of that. What did Drew say in that moment? Uh, Drew Rosenhaus. Oh, when y'all still friends? No, not no, at all. No, you don't fuck with Drew. No. Really? No. He stood by you in a lot of hard no. times. I mean, when, you, when you're getting paid, yeah, I'm pretty sure you. If I'm paying you, you you stick by me too. Mm -hmm. So you thought he was a friend? No. You, you never thought he was a friend? At one point. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, then I never had anything bad to say about me. Nothing while we were together. As soon as we parted ways, then paid. he started saying this and that and the other. Oh, I was, a, I was selfish. I was arrogant. Where was all of this from the beginning? You were paying him. Money, 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 money. Do you encourage people to sign with Drew Rosenhaus? Like, if, if players ask you, money, money, I'll money. say no comment. I fucked it up, bro. You I had really? amazing grace. No, I, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I had just say no comment. So, if, if a player to came to you and said, "Yo, I want to sign to Drew Rosenhaus," I would say, so, I got it right. "No comment." <laughs> Why no comment? I, I just, I, I can't say anything about it. Really? Yeah, I just wouldn't say anything about it. I mean, that's interesting. No, only because during the NFL, he did stick by you. I guess. Like, yeah, if I'm, yeah, if you're paying, if I'm paying you, then yeah, yeah, then. If we never had any issues while we were together, then why, when we part ways, then you want to have negative things to say about me? What made y'all part ways? There is a number of reasons. Oh, <laughs> Give us a few. Here was, we go. We got, a few, we got some time. <laughs> no, I mean, there, <laughs> time, we got time. there were some things that happened with my financial advisor, things of that nature. I can't really go into details or what have you. He robbed you? But but at the end of the day, like I said, when you, for me to have an agent and suppose any, any, any agent for that matter, they're going to approach guys coming out of college, and I'm sure Hatch can attest to this too. They're trying to get your services. They're going to tell you. They're going to tell your parents. Anybody that you surround, that those guys have surrounded themselves with, we're going to take care of him. We're going to have his best interest at heart. And so for me, you tell me that. You're telling my mom or you look at my family. I take that in totality. Mm -hmm. So then you go and things happen all right, then – outside of when it's like out of sight out of mind then for me when you're addressing and you're doing stuff for me then you essentially you're helping my family at the same time i think you have uh an allegiance an alliance or something toward my family at the same time it's just not me uh, that you're taking care of so i take my family into account when i make a number of decisions so when he doesn't take that into consideration then you just got to move on how much did he steal from you I didn't say I'm not gonna say he. I'm not gonna <laughs> say he's missing. I'm not gonna <laughs> say <laughs> what he's. Yeah. I'm not gonna say any of that. I, I can't. I can't really say. I can't really speak on it. But again, like I said, you sued him or something. Um, if I, if if any guys were to ask me mm -hmm. about anything about Drew Rosenhaus, I would just be like, do your due diligence. Wow. That was just, that's what I, that was. But isn't he on record saying that he made you so much money? That I don't he care deserved, what he said. He made he me nothing. What he took. I made myself that money. Right. I worked for it. He nego maybe negotiated, yeah. but he ain't made me nothing. Fair enough. He negotiated. Right. Right. Um, I mean, if he stole from you, that's good information to put out there because then other people can yeah, you stop being with Yeah, you got to protect other players to you. Um, Real as talk. A, as a, at the end of the day, like I said, I would tell guys to do their due diligence Right. as far as whom oh, they, shit. whom they're, uh, so you know, just go down right retain there. it, right there, uh, who bro. they're... <laughs> Who they're retaining as 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 uh, their representation? Yeah, because I think he's the reason that uh, AB really can't get another gig, only because 
He well, he's no longer. Ways well, he's no longer. And told him he need to get some help. You know well, what I'm saying? Well, I mean, and he put that. Yeah, that, he put yeah. that out there. Tim is out yeah, there. But he tainted cool. the water. But uh, but of course, again, everything was going well when AB was paying him that money. Like I said, he can't control the actions of AB, mm-hmm. so that may have you know triggered or prompted him to do what he did as far as parting ways. But that's uh, that's that's not on him. That's kind of like on on AB too. You had a six point five million dollar lawsuit against Drew Rosenhaus. <laughs> he went do you had a five year, you had a five year, you five. You in court for five years with him because you, you accused him of giving you bad financial advice that cost you millions. How much money he, he sued cost for you? fraud, breach of fiduciary duty, and negligence. Wow. He that's introduced a, you to a, a financial advisor named that's Jeff Rubin. Uh-huh. Recommended you hire him to manage your money. Whoa. Rubin was later banned from the securities industry after, industry after putting several NFL players' money into a high-risk investment that lost over $40 million. Whoa. So it's a good chance that Rubin was kicking money to Drew, to 100%. Drew on the back end. So I'm not going to say anything bad. So to your point, you yeah. asked me if somebody would ask me about it. I said, do your due diligence. Was that mm-hmm. Madoff? Yes. Did you get fucked over in Madoff thing? In the Madoff thing? No. The Bernie Madoff thing? No. Was it a Ponzi scheme? The money that they were putting? I don't know anything about no Madoff. I don't know he was if he was associated with that. Or are you asking if that's something similar? I'm asking if that's where you're... I would not be surprised if that's where they're putting your money. Interesting. Why'd you drop it, though? After after five years battling him in court, why did you decide to drop the, the case? I just had to just, you know, it's, it's not even worth the headache. You know, it's just taking time out of my schedule. Mm-hmm. Talk to lawyers, go do here, go this and that. And the other. It just wasn't worth it at the end of the day. Like I said, I mean, trust Fuck me. That, that karma, guy's a karma is everything, bro. Like I said, I know I'm not a bad person. Like I said, I know what the stigma is. I know what the perception is. But Did he make you the, sign something that you can't speak bad yeah, about? Yeah, I can't, I can't speak on it. Yeah, because you'll probably hurt his business. I can't speak on yeah. it. Yeah. So like I said, that's why, I, like I said, I'm careful at what I say. Like I said, I, I knew what you were getting at. Mm-hmm. But like I said, I would tell you, do your due diligence. Hatch has even asked me. He's asked me mm-hmm. about certain players or whatever, what I thought about, you know, Drew Rosenhaus or whatever this, that, and the, that and the other. Like I tell you, do your due diligence. Are there other players with similar stories? Oh, of course. Uh, I'm sure. I'm under, sure. under Drew? Um, I would, I probably, I'm not sure. Yeah. But I'm, um, what I know with Jeff Rubin, that situation, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, gotcha. Most of Jeff Rubin's clients were Drew, Rosen, Drew Rosenhaus clients. Do you have anger towards any of them? Like if you saw Drew in the street right now or Jeff Rubin in the street no, right now? No, like I said, I just, like I said, I, I kill him with blindness. I just let it, and then. How do you kill him with blindness? Keep your shades on? I just, <laughs> no, I just act like I don't, I don't know him. Oh, got you, got you, don't yeah, see him. Okay, yeah, yeah, got you, got yeah, you, got you, got you, got you. Right, yeah. You know I mean? I just act like I don't see him, bro. Like, I'm like I said, I, bro, I know who I am. I'm not a bad person. Yeah. Regardless, like I said, at the end of the day, like I said, if I was that type of person that I've been tra- portrayed to be over these years, it would have translated, transferred to off the field. It is my hope uh, for Terrell Owens that you don't go to the grave with that narrative. At some point in time, you get to really tell your story, the real oh, yeah, story. Yeah, I'm working. Yeah, I'm working of, on. I'm working. T.O. No, no, I'm working on some stuff. Um, like I said, I got a meeting next week in L.A. Um, about a bigger documentary. I know I've done some stuff with. Uh, we did a mini docu docu series with uh, the Players Tribune, and so with that, you know, it was successful. Um, the content, and then even with some of the things that have happened since then transpired, like me not making the top 100, um, you know, all-time team, things of that nature, this Dunham and stuff or what have you. Have they done a 30 for 30 on you yet? N- uh, no, I'm, ESPN, if, not, I'm not going to give them free content. I know what your doc should be called. But it's if, it's never my fault. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I've never, I've never, <laughs> but <laughs> you assume that I feel like that it's not yeah, my yeah. fault. Like I've 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 taken some accountability. Like I said, could I have done some things wrong? Yeah, I've said that. What in the NFL did you do wrong? What did what? Because I celebrated? Because I was outspoken? Is that wrong? Sounds like you're defending yourself when but we ask you wrong? what you did wrong. Right, but is that wrong? Well, just tell us what you did wrong. Yeah, what I, do you think? I, looking you back anything? in hindsight, just say nothing if you say if you. Think I just nothing. okay. Maybe I could have addressed the media a different way if if I knew how to play the game. To kind of, I guess, stay ahead or stay in good graces with the media. But that's not what I was about. But did you do anything wrong? Because what? No, that, I didn't. What did I do wrong? If you're asking me what did I do wrong, there's obviously something I that you assume that Matthew, I can't tell you. What, what did, did I do wrong, Matthew? You're a wide, you're a wide receiver. You played in the too, league. Too honest. It's just mm. too honest. That's it. People but don't is want that it. People right. don't, to some but people is that it wrong? is. To some people it's not. People don't want to so hear it, the truth right, a it, lot of the time. So in your assessment, 
In your opinion, is that wrong? No. It's not wrong, if that's what the truth is. Let, let me ask you one question. Yeah. What, what, give me one thing that you thought T.O. did wrong in his career. Just give me one. One of the 20,000 that you I, did I'm not making wrong. the argument that he did anything wrong. I'm not just, one thing at all. Not one. There's not one I'm not making ever, the argument that he did. I know. I'm what, asking a total separate question. I just oh. want to know what's one thing that you thought that you, when you heard well, of last wrong and different are, are the one thing that I would have done differently if I was him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that he did anything wrong because mm -hmm. I'm not in this there in the situation right. to know what it is. So I can't claim what is right and wrong for you. One thing I would have done differently. Mm -hmm. I would have just apologized to Donovan if he was On being a fucking baby. Okay. Yeah. That, just that, apologize. That, that, it's like a baby. It's like, yeah, you know how powerful an apology okay. is? Like you basically strip the person who needs it from all their power. You don't apologize for them. You really apologize you, for you. Yeah. You it's like, all right, just throw me the ball. I'm sorry. You done? You done crying? I, I wouldn't think that he, somebody of that caliber would need an apology. I but didn't now think you that know. he was, at, at, I, I didn't think at that time he was, he just asked me. Men have fragile egos. Men have fragile egos. Yeah. I totally get it. I think everybody has an ego at some point. You know what I mean? And like I said, I'm sure, yeah, did it surface during the course of my career? Yeah, but at the end of the day, you asked me, did I have I? No, I have not done anything wrong because everything that I've been criticized for and vilified for, they're now embracing. Being outspoken, that's they're embracing that. I wouldn't me, have worked me, out in front I'm of I'm not media. talking to you right now. I know you're not. I'm <laughs> you're talking to you. Scoring touchdown and celebrating? I was criticized for that. Guess what they're doing? They're embracing that now. Right. So yeah, so yeah, I didn't, I haven't done anything wrong, but in the eyes of many at that time, yeah, they didn't know how to view what I was doing. Mm -hmm. A lot of what you were doing was marketing though. Like the whole two mm -hmm. popcorn thing. I mean, it's got a whole podcast yeah. years later yeah, named after, you know what I'm saying? Well, but here, I was trying to, like I said, at that time, like I said, being creative, that was mm -hmm. motivation for me to get into the end zone. I knew that I couldn't do all those things if I didn't score. And then, like I said, it became a topic around the league where guys were, you know, mad at me for celebrating or scoring or dancing yeah, yeah. to, to where some guys on the same team. I'm like, bro, if you if, if you don't like it, then stop him from getting in the end zone. So is that wrong? No. But to a lot of people, based on how the narrative was created. Yeah, I'm a bad person. I'm a disruptive guy. I did this. I did that. So yeah, I, I hated not, you when you stood on the star. Right, in so Cowboys it's not. Stadium. It's not that I'm. I, that I'm the, never, the one never celebration wrong. Ever. Yeah, but I'm a, I was a cowboy like, fan. Yeah, absolutely. But like my father said, if you don't like him standing in the star, stop him. Yeah, don't mm -hmm. let him get in. The you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. All right. Well, there it is. Thank you, Terrell get your popcorn Owens. Ready. Matthew Hatchet. Get your popcorn ready. Get your popcorn ready podcast. Available wherever you can get podcasts. Thank y'all for coming, man. Really man, appreciate, man, appreciate you. Appreciate that. Yeah, appreciate yeah, you. Absolutely. Yeah, and it's uh the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. As always, if you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. If you think we're just a couple of idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. Thank you for listening.